Welcome back to episode 71. This episode is with Itkim Yellow Belt Ted, who got it, uh, I can't even remember, in the last year or so, or before, when it was allowed. Don't worry. We do everything the government says at all times, because they're always right. Anyways, uh, and he's brought his uh, love of Krav Maga uh, to his children as well. One of them does Krav Maga and one of them does Jiu-Jitsu. So that's awesome. Uh, and on this podcast, we go deep. Uh, I talk a lot about my personal experiences in, in life and growing up. So does Ted. And we talk a lot about actually parenting. But first, don't forget, this podcast is brought to you by Urban Tactics Krav Maga. So if you like this podcast and you like our content, then you can support us. Now, how can you do that? Now, of course, uh, you can always, when you're, of course, allowed, go to urbantacticscam.com and come and train with us. And if you're listening to this in 20 years, you'll be like, I don't understand what he means because, yeah, COVID, great COVID thing of 2020, 2021 now. Anyways, you can come train with us at urbantacticskm.com. And if you just like to see the ramblings of myself and the others willing to post, Ted wrote one actually this week as an intro to this podcast, you could say. Um, and uh, it's utkmblog.com. Now, on utkmblog.com, you can read, you can listen to this podcast directly, uh, you can also. Uh, just support us under the support us tab. You can just donate whatever money you want to to us because we like that and thank you to those who do. But we understand that not everyone wants to just give us money for content. Who does that? Um, although I know a lot of people are going behind paywalls nowadays because of craziness. But anyways, you can also then go to utkmu.com and you can learn online. While it's not ideal, you should always be learning Krav Maga with uh, un- or under certified uh, professionals. You can learn with your training partners in the meantime, or you can fill in blanks or simply learn how we do it. Right? There's nothing wrong with more perspective or uh, explanations on that. So utkmu.com, you can get a membership. Uh, right now there's the beginner curriculum or novice curriculum available and eventually advanced curriculum and there's also a free member section that i am adding a new section on so you can see under the free membership section so again you can support us by going utkmu.com or under the support us tab at utkmblog.com you can look at various products or books a lot of books that i have put up using Amazon affiliate links if you would like to support us like that and get something for you. I don't have too much things up that I'm endorsing right now um, outright, but I am. There's a few nutritional things, coffee, and a lot of books. I need to add some more books on that. So uh, use those Amazon affiliate links under the YouTube Cam blog support us tab. And also we have social media. Urban Tactics, Kramagan on Instagram. You can see what we're kind of posting. It's uh, short videos now I'm posting every week of what you can see on UTKMU. And, of course, follow us on Facebook, Urban Tactics Krav Maga. We're on, uh, we are on Twitter, UrbanTacticsKM.com, but who really cares about Twitter anymore? Uh, so I don't... Stuff gets posted there as I post on other stuff. So that's, you know, if you love our content, you love my ramblings, you want more, uh, the more you support us, the better. Like, well, I'm happy I was able to survive the COVID, COVID, COVID apocalypse from a business perspective. Um, but just, so the more support you give, the better, whether you want to train with us in person, online, or simply support us through your awesome donations or purchasing through our Amazon affiliate links. It's much appreciated and again the more i can focus on this the more um content i can put out more regularly but uh, if i have to do other stuff it's very difficult for me although i talk about in this podcast by the way a lot of growth that i've come up you know from a teen some of my stories from a teenager for example that my parents might not have heard before so if they're listening they can hear it and judge appropriately um 
No, I'm kidding. Uh, but yeah, we the, one of the main key topics of this particular podcast is parenting. Now, I understand that I do not have children, so a lot of you will be like, eh, well, you don't have children. Uh, the things I'm saying are coming from uh, things I learned when I was studying psychology and things I've researched just perusing data and information. And Ted is, of course, coming from a little bit more experienced perspective about parenting. Um, but, but I thought it was important to have, and I, I'll see if more students want to talk about this kind of stuff, but it's important given that um, there's a lot of misinformation out there, not specific to a political party, so please stop. Oh, it's just that side. No, everyone is full of shit, basically. And our youth today are so lost, and they don't know how to make heads of tails of things. And where it really comes down to is good parenting. And I cannot stress enough. If you come train martial arts with me and you bring your kids, as far as I'm concerned, you're, you're already being a good parent. It's one of the best things you can do. Family activities that are healthy for your children. <clears throat> Physical activity is even better. Bringing them to martial arts is an amazing thing you can do. And doing it with them. It's not just a babysitting center for you to drop your kids off at because you want someone else to teach them discipline or whatever it is while you can go off and do what you want. Be a better parent. Come be like Ted. Do it with your children. Right? It's the most amazing thing any parent can do. And uh, like I talk about that I felt mentorship was lacking in my life and that if you're a good parent, you can help your child survive the chaos that is the world today. If not always, probably always. You know, the world is different than it was a long time ago in what it takes to survive. The challenges are different. We're no longer, in the Western world at least, um, struggling just to survive. Now it's a perceptual thing. So strong guidance is what we needed. And again, so I think that it is um, super important about self-defense. It's not just physical. Okay, this idea that it's only about punching and kicking is not true anymore. You need to give people the people skills, the uh, the mental skills, everything in around the uh, how to how to interpret information. This is all part of self defense, as far as I'm concerned. But enough of my intro. We go deep on this episode of Warriors Den, episode seventy one with Ted. Krav Maga is not just a self-defense system, it is a way of life. Warriors Den is a podcast for Kravists, fighters, martial artists, warriors, politicians, and general citizens. Consider this. The society that separates scholars from its warriors will have its thinking done by cowards and its fighting done by fools. Lucididi. Your host, Jonathan Fader, talks to guests in an open and uncensored format about their fights, their philosophies, and their lives. No topic is taboo, and the conversation may start in one place and end in another. As the quote suggests, you cannot separate the warrior from the politics and the world around them, as a true warrior must be a student in all forms of art and science. You're listening to The Warrior's Day. The Warrior's Day. Brought to you by Urban Tactics Krav Maga, turning lambs into lions. So welcome back. I'm here with Ted, UTKM Yellow Belt, uh, father and general life liver. <laughs> so Just a guy. Just a guy. So um, yeah, well, let's just start how you got into martial arts in the first place. Ooh. Well, I guess like the first foray was like a long time ago. I was eight years old and, um, you know, the Karate Kid movies came out and, you know, you're watching Daniel LaRusso and all that good stuff. And uh, I just told my dad I wanted to try it. So I think I ended up doing a couple belts in, in uh, karate, but uh, there was no real support behind it, no real infrastructure. So once the, once the lessons went away and you kind of got wrapped up in other sports, uh, the infrastructure went, so you know I still remember some front kicks and yeah. stuff like that. But um, you know, and then and then I, like I got heavily involved in the sports, and then um, the blog post that I was uh, writing for you, I, I think I spent a year looking at the UTKM website before yeah. I finally pulled the trigger and said, "Okay, I got to go in and do something." A lot of people like that; they're hovering. Yeah, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was a hoverer for yeah. sure, and uh, basically. 
at the end of the day, um, just know if you face that way. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> at the end of the day, it was, um, I had to find something where I could do a lot of physical activity, um, in a short period of time. Cause just, you know, working in film, I don't have the hours to train and train and train and ski and ski yeah. and ski. It just, uh, you know, life happened. So yeah. Two years later, I'm still here. Still here. That's good. Yeah. And you know, film, I understand. Like I get a lot of guys actually in film are like, Oh, my schedule is this and that. Can you have a different schedule? No, <laughs> it's, it's pretty brutal. Now, um, I guess, you know, one aspect we can talk about is, is as a family man, mm-hmm. Krav Maga, and, and at least as I teach it, because if you go differently, uh, you get different effects. Like, do you think it has helped you outside of just the, the physical? Like, I think you talk about it a little bit. in, in the Yeah, um, in terms of, you know, it's hard to really teach kids situational awareness, oh. right? Um, particularly, you know, like anything else, when it comes... You, the advice that comes from your parents, you half ignore it. But when it comes, the same words come from your own instructor. Yeah. All of a sudden they're paying attention. Um, when strangers tell them, when strangers, <laughs> when, when strangers tell them, I think in terms of like the best thing, um, that, you know, for Finn with jujitsu and with Chloe, with, uh, with Krav is that I've, I've told them that a lot of the things that we're doing, particularly with martial arts, is that this is the stuff I wish I'd done when oh, I was yeah. younger, right? Yep. So the, I could teach them all the stuff that I know, yeah. but I'd rather expose them to the things that I wish I'd sort of been exposed to much earlier. And particularly, um, you know, with uh, the UTKM classes, it's exposure just to a different world. And it, I can tell, you know, particularly with uh, Chloe forming her own values and uh, yeah. her own norms, she can feel really uncomfortable, but oh, yeah. that's, that's the world, right? Yeah. Like it's not, everyone's going to think the same way. Yeah. So these exposure, these vignettes, like she's definitely, I think, um, starting to take to heart that, well, it's not necessarily always a fair place. You can be yourself and have your own values, but that doesn't mean you can just sort of enforce it on others. Yeah. And, uh, you got to get used to you listening. You can try, but they get mad. <laughs> they get mad. And then, you know, um, and that, I mean, that's just sort of all like, and aside from all the general philosophy of the, the actual self-defense and the, yeah. the skill that uh, we're all picking up along yeah. the way. And I, I can say without it, at least in Vancouver, if not other places, the, the way I approach it is not the same. No. Right. And people, you know, people often go on the internet with anything, not Krav, Jiu Jitsu, whatever. And they get an idea of what it's supposed to be, you know, expectations versus reality. And some people will come in and say, Oh, they just want to hit things. And if they're not constantly beating the crap out of this, they're not interested. I'm like, Hey man, go to a meathead gym. Uh, yeah. if you want that, uh, or they, they just want to learn the, mm-hmm. the technical, the, the technique. Yeah. Right now, Krav in its own is not just technique. And if you no. can't get it, that in your head, you're going to have problems. Well, self-defense in its own, I should say, mm-hmm. but I interject other things, as you know, politics, yeah. which not everyone enjoys. I understand, but it, to me, it's, I'm looking at it. We're, and perhaps always we're at a period in life where there is, you know, people are saying the word nowadays, culture war, mm-hmm. right? And, and I'm not specific to, in Vancouver, I come off as heavy conservative, but I'm not specific to really, I'm not married to the ideas of either, yeah. either one thing. But it's, it's, I'm noticing, what I'm seeing is there is clearly a brainwashing yep. of a particular narrative going on. Yep. And... W- Whatever it is about me, I don't like being told what to do. So yes. <laughs> I, I inherently, I'm like, okay, but I prefer being to live free, right? Mm-hmm. So within reason, and I'm seeing, I've had people of all walks of life, including people who come from conservative backgrounds say like, I have never heard that mm-hmm. before. Yeah. And I'm like, why? It's all over the place. Yeah. Whatever it is I'm saying. Yeah. And it's that people get in their bubbles, right? And so my perspective is, whether people enjoy it or not. First of all, Krav is uncomfortable, yeah. even without my ranting. Yeah. Um, but it's that self-defense is so much more than yeah. than the physical, right? Now, you're you're older, so yeah. you have some uh, life experience. But for the younger people, it's like... Yeah, yeah. You know. They've... Uh, it, you know, when I explain to people, like... Um, you know, they, they come to me like, Oh, you, you know, you've, you've got this useful perspective. And then I just say, well, I'm 46 yeah. actually. And <laughs> it, it kind of takes people, you know, a little bit by surprise, but, um, you know, that's sort of that continuous approach that like, there's just, 
there's so much to learn, right? Yeah. It never really, you can never really stop. And, um, you know, if you want to reinvent yourself every five years, like go for it. Nowadays you can. Yes, right? you exactly. A hundred years ago, not so much. Not, <laughs> not so much, right? There's just, there's so much to, um, to take from. And, uh, you know, in terms of like the, the discussions in class, like, it's just like, well, um, I thought it always fit pretty well because like, you know, we're always taught, like, we got to think and move. Yeah. Think and move. Yeah. And I guess that's what I've always particularly enjoyed. Um, I had a rugby coach who said, um, he's like, Ted, you are a fantastic player in a straight line. As soon as they <laughs> throw a move on you, right? Like you're all over the place, yeah, right? Yeah. Because your head's down and, and you're just, you're moving. Go forward. Go forward, right? Yeah. Um, and so with all of this, I mean, you can see the perplexed look I have on my face when we're doing some of the color built stuff. Like, yeah. I'm just trying to piece it all together. Yeah. Um, well, some of that is like, you got to know your body. Like, so for like skiing, which is your thing, yeah. historically, you got to stay rigid yeah. to a degree. Like I don't ski. And even if I wanted to, you know, I can't, my knees are going to hate me. Um, it, but it's like, that's the thing about Krav, in particular Krav, but not specific, mm -hmm. is you got to be able to move your body in all sorts of ways. Mm -hmm. Because we're looking at, I got to wrestle, I got to box, I got to kickbox versus a specialist who just does it. They know how to do that really yeah. well. Yeah. So the, I was, you know, the example Mayweather versus Connor. Right. Well, you know, I think if Connor had actually had ten fights in boxing, he might have beaten him. But he did the whole "I want the money" thing. But if we went the other way, I don't think even with ten MMA fights, Mayweather is going to beat Connor. Right. Right. Because the specialist is so. Yes, rigid that's their life that's that, their specialty to come out of it and so you know you're you know, 46 and you've you've done so much skiing and just whatever and now we're doing grappling judo yeah. and wrestling <laughs> yeah. and other stuff in the color belts and it's like you got to get your body to do all sorts of yeah stuff yeah right and and the neuroplasticity and the connection between brain body is 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 less when you're older <laughs> oh it's it, yeah it feels like the brain stems fighting against me yeah. um you know after 40 years 40 seasons of of you know downhill skiing it was actually about seven years ago um six six years ago i started venturing more into the backcountry and um that took a whole new level of sort of learning and discipline because all of a sudden avalanche reports matter. Yeah. Equipment matters, right? It involved a lot of uh, hiking discipline and a lot of sort of uh, outdoor education. And, um, you know, on one hand, my knees are thankful uh, because we spend more time going up than we go down. Um, and it's always a bit of a scramble and, you know, slight adventure. But on the other hand, um, you know, taking a 60 pound pack, you know, through the woods and trying to get over logs and stuff like that. Uh, you know, your body just kind of goes, why, mm -hmm. why are you doing this again? You're, you're punishing me in a different way. And it's like, well, that's just the way it is. And we'll get some nice turns on the way down. Mm -hmm. Now skiing, you're talking about outdoor, uh, like avalanche. Um, what's the word I'm blanking already. Avalanche reports, avalanche yeah, it, that's it. situation. The, threat level or the risk assessment mm -hmm. for doing backcountry anything in Canada yeah. or skiing is so high. Now, Vancouver, I think it's hilarious. I get people, more affluent individuals, mm -hmm. I don't want to do Krav Maga or martial arts, it's too dangerous. I don't want to teach my kids that <laughs> it's too violent. Oh, hey, we're going to go ski at whatever, yeah. 70 mile an hour <laughs> down the mountain with the avalanche, no problem. And then you're like, huh? Yeah, yeah. Like, it's, um, there's all this sort of, uh, you know, cultural acceptedness in terms of risk, you know, where it's okay to, um, you know, throw yourself into something and, and, and what is weird. Right? Yeah. So, uh, like yeah. I'm terrified when I did snowboarding once or twice, I'm like terrified. I don't like that speed without being able to hit a button and stop. And be <laughs> Cause if I screw up my body, ah. well, I think it, uh, between the difference between the two of us, right. It's just sort of, um, like that's in, my muscle memory, yeah. right? My dad gave me my first set of skis in 1982, yeah. right? So that that's like that's a long time ago. Yeah. Um, so before I was born, I think. Yeah, <laughs> just reminded myself, you know, how much older I am than most people. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, I've spent you know so much time on steep pitches on that inside edge, just confident that I know it's going to hold, and if it doesn't, I still know what to do. Yeah. Right. Um, and I guess because I've been through, I don't know, like thousands of hours of, of skiing. Yeah. 
you're you just you just know and the in terms of like uh you know krav um i'd have to say like just spending over the last couple of years you know it's definitely helped even with the backcountry stuff just in terms of like that quiet a quiet alert yeah, right yeah. cuz we're constantly like soon as soon as you get out at the trailhead it's funny, you know, like a lot of people who say they're prepared and then when I ask them to sort of, you know, do they have their 10 essentials with them, yeah. which is like, you know, map, compass, food, yeah. uh, shelter, right? They're missing a lot of the stuff. And uh, you, you spend so much time just constantly remind yourself, all right, where are we? What are we doing? Where did we come from? Yeah. How are we getting back? You know, it's like me and, you know, I don't know if I showed you the latest update of my trek. I'm pretty pretty happy but like i can get into it and go and i can survive out of it for two weeks right and it's we go backcountry camping we don't go like crazy into the middle of nowhere because the truck won't won't get there but yeah. um it's still you're an hour away from anything people, at least or you're you know um in an area with snow or there's stuff and uh in canada people die every year all the time you know that's what i was saying about the skiing is like if i look up skiing or backcountry deaths in canada mm-hmm. there's tons every year if i look up deaths from martial arts I'm, where are they yes right <laughs> so yeah. it's like yeah you get the injuries and it's usually you know in many ways in in martial arts it's i think it's the coach's mistake from not recognizing who's partnered with who and yep. what, what's going on i mean if you're a more senior student then you should know also regardless yeah. of the style but you know this this disconnect of of uh, threat assessment and, and preparedness mm-hmm. and, and, and what you have to be ready for, for, yeah. you know, the COVID thing, no one, most, well, I wouldn't say no, most people weren't prepared for that. No. And I'm like, I'm, I don't care what your beliefs yeah. are. I'm, you're wrong. I'm sorry, but that wasn't that bad of a pandemic. We no. made it into something worse than it was. And I'm like, imagine if it was yeah significant. Like are walking you re- dead yeah. kind of pandemic. Yes. It, it, like, it's not even that bad, just where we le- legitimately can't even have DoorDash or skip the dishes or right. delivery services because even that's too dangerous for a two week or month period. Yeah. How many people? Because they would have to say something like, um, you have one week, get everything you need to survive a month mm-hmm. or six weeks is what a lot of the people are saying. Six weeks. Mm-hmm. Have fun with that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we have one week. Yeah. Have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we've always, um, you know, my wife and I, we've always managed to keep things, you know, fairly well prepared, um, you know, for someone who spent a lot of time, like both of us have spent a lot of time in the back country. I was, I was a little disappointed, <laughs> you know, at our lack of preparedness yeah. in terms of, you know, like true emergency yeah. preparedness. Right? To be fair, it's expensive to do it right. It's expensive. It, it is. But, um, funny thing, um, for about a solid year, I was bringing home extra toilet paper from work, yeah. right? Because <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, I was the star wagon guy, and there was always like these you know broken cases of toilet paper, uh, you know, at the end of shows. And I was working a lot, so I was I was constantly bringing it back, and I was getting so much flack. And then yeah. all of a sudden, our grocery store ran out, yeah. and all of a sudden, I was if I was the you family see? hero. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I was the I was the family hero because we managed to go. Uh, through this entire pandemic without having to go buy toilet paper yeah, oh, nice. and how I managed to like squirrel away so much. Hopefully no one from production is listening to this. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and even my in-laws, you know, thought, you know, it was rather funny till I brought them over. Oh, I think, you know, about 70 rolls. Yeah. Right. You're good. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. I was back in the good books, right? Even, even if they are listening, let's be honest, the movie industry is the most wasteful, most ridiculous, yeah. <laughs> which is hilarious for their, most of the A-listers are all about environmental and this, and then you yeah. go on the sets with them and you're like, you guys yeah. are the worst. Yeah. Plastic water <laughs> bottles everywhere, yeah. you know, stuff, you know, take a bite of, one bite of food, yeah. throw it in the garbage. Yeah. yeah it's no, just it's, like, uh, there's too much. There's a, there's a lot of hypocrisy. <laughs> yeah, and it is. It's, it's, you know, I think that comes from well, other than the A-listers are mostly narcissists, but uh, the the just lack of perspective and, and general knowledge, like you know, uh, environmentalism and stuff. Like mm-hmm. I've heard people on both sides. Same with the mass argument. I've heard people who are making arguments on both sides. I'm like, I'm like, y- you don't know enough to yeah. make that comment and I, and I, you don't need to be an expert i don't believe that anymore not with the internet you don't need to be an expert but no. co- like 
come on, like just look into the some basic, some basic, you know, the mask thing. It doesn't stop viruses. I'm like, yes, I, I agree. However, how is this virus transmitted? Yeah. Is it airborne or is it through other particulates? And then usually they just look at you where it's like oh, it's spit. Basically, if you spit at someone's face, you can give it to them. Right. So the masks are somewhat effective. However, is there any evidence anywhere to suggest that the mask mandates somehow helped on a huge significant level? Not really. Yeah. Right. And of course, you get people like, how dare you on either side? I'm like, well, you like facts and data. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you you actually brought to facts you. to an argument and they, <laughs> and they, they don't want to... Um, you know, respond in a similar fashion, yeah. right? It's sort of neat. Forgot reaction. we were watching some video on YouTube where it was the guy who is really good, like explaining like cognitive dissidence where you know something to be incorrect, but you do it anyway, whether it's to save face or ego. Yeah. yeah. And he was, they were showing like the five ways, you know, you've got them like with, you've yeah. caught them. Yeah. And, and, uh, it's, if they, you know, that's why they say as soon as they start attacking you, as a person now that one I'm like it, de- it actually depends on the context because sometimes the, the character of the person does matter yes. in an argument but sometimes it doesn't I think a lot of people uh, don't actually know how to have a debate no anymore. because they don't know how to listen yeah right it's um, I you know one one skill I've been trying to impart on well uh, a lot of guys that I, that I work with and yeah. you know at home as um just even a simple skill of paraphrasing what the person said. Like, are you actually hearing what they're, what they're saying? Like just, and, but it, whether you get the words right or not, yeah. uh, you know, it's just sort of giving pause, right? Because otherwise people are just sort of burping this verbal diarrhea back yeah. and forth and no one has actually paid attention to what the, uh, the other person is saying. And then it's funny, like you'll watch uh, uh, like a heated argument and it won't, where the argument ended is nowhere near where it started <laughs> <laughs> at this yeah. point. It's just sort of one up each other with yeah. zingers right yeah. it's kind of the way parliament functions now oh yeah yeah i mean you know i've, I've I, it, part of it could be me fully aware of that but uh, you know you try you try paraphrasing and i find what happens a lot of times is they're like that's not what i think and it's like okay i'm, I'm trying to understand can yeah. you maybe say it in a different way and, yeah. no like, yeah. you're not listening to me it's like maybe you don't have the words or knowledge to explain what you want right now and that's fine i, yeah. I don't always know how to explain stuff even if you don't hit the mark, though, right? They they are taking a few seconds to reason their own words, right? Yeah. So, like you said, their response, like that's not what I said, and it's like, okay, well, you have another opportunity to, <laughs> you know, again, explain what you are trying to say, yeah. and uh, you know, if they get frustrated with that, then you know, to your point, they haven't actually thought through what they're trying to say in the first place. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So then, okay, just walk away. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it, well, you know, that's the thing. It's, it's, that's why I approach the things the way I do. It's like, sometimes you can't just walk away. And yeah. that is the Krav, yep. Krav mentality. And, and you're seeing it now with the politics getting crazy. And it's like, clearly, you know, I don't want to, it sounds like you're not listening to the other side, but I, I, I try to, like, I find that one side of the aisle right now genuinely does not give a shit mm-hmm. what the other side thinks no. at all. Mm-hmm. And it's trying to ram shit down people's throat. And it's like, okay, mm-hmm. we're not having a dialogue here, nor do you care. Because you'll get them saying, I don't give a shit what you think yeah. or say. I'm You're just going to say what I want to say. And then I'll be like, or in my, not everyone, I know a lot of people don't like to do that. Have you read the actual data that you're citing? <laughs> yes. And it's no. Because I'm like, the actual data says something different. Yep. Yep. No, you're wrong. Like in Canada right now, the gun thing, it's like, it's like banging my head against the wall. <laughs> Like, do you know Canada's gun laws to the average person? Well, yeah, blah, 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 blah. nope, that's not what they are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they have an impression based on what someone has told them, which you know someone else has told them. They haven't actually, you know, taken the time to sort of read through. Interesting side note: my wife actually worked for the government of, of Alberta as yeah. a researcher, and um, she would put together briefing notes. Right yeah. now, the amusing thing was. Uh, she told me that she would get the topic of what she was supposed to do, the briefing note of literally a few hours yeah. before they would go to we sit down. Know. Exactly, right? So, you know, and then she would do this environmental scanning, put something together, and then email it to, uh, you know, some aide. And the aide would probably, you know, brief the uh, MLA at the time, right? Yeah. So that's not how I informed. 
yeah. you know, people were. And Broken telephone and yes, then exactly. blurred something out that's not correct. Yes, it, it, exactly. Which uh, I guess, you know, that's just the way they want to debate. You know, it's, or there's well, not enough time. Debate. It's No, they don't care. Yeah. Let, let's <laughs> take our current prime minister. It's like, did you sit down and read? It takes. It would take you an hour or two yeah. to just sit down and really try to understand the firearms legislation in Canada as it is and was. Yeah. The amount of times he either intentionally or unintentionally misquoted or quoted American stuff is like, that's not acceptable. Yeah. Like, I don't care if we have differing opinions, but that is not acceptable. Yeah. You don't even know your own laws. I think that's purely based on the agenda, right? Like, he's, yeah. that's, regardless if you presented like sort of, you know, decent facts and a balanced sort of briefing. Yeah. That's not his agenda. Yeah. Right. It's, so no, it's, it's just, close. it's not even close. Right. So they're going to look for just a, a way around, you know, a balanced argument to sort of reinforce what they want to sort of impose. Anyway, and it's like, right? I, I, I don't understand people who I like facts and data. I'm like, here you go. And they're like, what data? No, you made that up. Yeah. I'm like, no, <laughs> it says government of Canada. Yeah. Right. right there. Right there. You That's know? the source. No, I, it's interesting. I don't know if you listened to the last episode I did with I haven't uh, had the, chance, the tactical rabbi. Um, you know, it's just interesting because he, he was vehement, like, no, people should have the right to carry it, mm-hmm. right? And I did ask about mental health. There was, you know, a very American answer. Well, you know, we need to make sure, but yeah, people should right. have the right. <laughs> now, it's like you need balance, I think. Like, it's an interesting perspective. It's like, should everyone be allowed to carry? And that's a balancing act, mm-hmm. uh, concealed carry or otherwise. Like now, if I ask me, do I really need to carry a gun in Vancouver? Eh, not particularly. Uh, yeah. I, I don't think so. If I was in parts of Toronto or Montreal, I might be more inclined to say yes. Uh, yeah, depending on the, I mean, growing up in, in Toronto, like, but it was, uh, you know, on the east side of Toronto, it wasn't, you know, wasn't particularly dangerous um now 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 if you go to certain there there was an area jane and finch that was sort of um you know one section where there that's what it was about as ghetto like as it was going to be the fine ghetto well you know um large concrete towers Mm. you know very low projects projects kind of thing and um you know uh just the, the, you know, talking to some police officers, you know, there were a lot of youth in those areas that yeah. were dealing with some pretty, like, street-like issues, right? The, thug life. Thug life, <laughs> right? Um, and the the strange thing that, you know, that I guess, you know, growing up on the, on the east side of Toronto, you're just kind of scratching your head and you're just like, you'd hear these stories that would yeah. come from these different high schools. Yeah. And you're like, this just doesn't you know, this doesn't compute. Yeah. Right. Because you're not witnessing any of this in in your neighborhood. But then I remember I had one teacher who, you know, uh, called us out on it and was like, you guys have never ventured over there. So how would you know? Right. And by the way, don't venture over there because, (laughs) (laughs) you know, like it's just wrong neighborhood kid. Yeah. Well, even that, like, you know, I grew up in Richmond Mm -hmm. at the time it was still fairly diverse. If you know, Richmond Metro Vancouver, now it's predominantly Chinese. Uh, now, I grew up in a you know, middle class home. Mm-hmm. I'm, you know, whatever I qualms I have with my parents, they're reasonable, normalish people. And, you know, they're good people. And for one reason or another, I found myself hanging around all sorts of people. Yeah. Right. And it's, it's like, you know, I can easily see that if I didn't have a stable home, mm-hmm. I could have easily gone down a path because I'd yes. always ha- I, like I, I, I was always uncomfortable around the people that I knew were like they are gangsters. Yeah, even in high school, like they are gang. Not by gangster, I mean they have a criminal record already in high school, yeah. but they somehow aren't in juvie. They aren't, but they right. are willing to be. Vi- they are going to be violent. Yes. I know they more will be willing. violent. Uh, and it's like I always shied away from those people because they, you know, they scared me, and I'm like, I don't. Yeah. feel comfortable around them but the and those were all, those were only a couple of people that were actually like legit legit yeah. and then you have everyone in the middle which is the people out that that were more willing to straddle the line than me yeah but i would always be like you're gonna do what yeah i'm gonna go home now 
yeah. whether it be mild theft or destruction of property or something like that. But that's because, you know, I think I came from a reasonable home yeah. where I could just go, I had a place to sleep. Right? Yeah. I was telling this story the other day about the 14-year-old girls. I must have been 60. I think I told you Yes, story. yeah. And how we were dropped. We were like a friend of mine who was a nightmare of a person turned into a huge issue when I'm like, go fuck yourself. I don't want to be friends with you yeah. anymore. <laughs> like legitimate, it turned into some mild violence. But before that happened, we dropped these girls off in a basement suite uh, in the poor area of Richmond near the school where we were at. And it's like one girl that we weren't hanging out in. It's like, hey, you want to do some meth? Mm-hmm. And like, <laughs> I did not do drugs in high school. Yeah. Right. I did not because I was still that good. I might even be mildly autistic and I'm just like, no, drugs are bad. Uh, yeah. I do not have that attitude anymore. But <laughs> the... Like the girl's like, you want to do meth? I'm like, huh? It's like two in the morning. Yeah, you're like, why? Wh- what? <laughs> and I'm like, mm. but you can tell, like, you know, I, I'm a, like sixteen year old guy. Like, if if I wanted to be some manipulative dick, I could have probably done whatever with these girls. Yeah, and be like to my friend, hey, I'll see you later. Yeah, but I'm like, I, like, I just didn't know what to do. Yeah, with that situation, I'm like, here's one girl giving me meth. This one girl was already happy enough that i made my friend drive them home yeah which says something yeah about and i don't think the girl that we were hanging out with did with meth her roommate did right but you could like like i could be making up my memory but i feel like she's like this guy actually made sure i got home safe yeah what what this is weird and then but i'm like i don't know what to do with this situation i'm gonna go now like (laughs) yeah bye (laughs) yeah well very much so right this is this is weird this is one of those sort of uh, TV parenting moments that you know you'd hear about, and then all of a sudden it's sort of thrust upon you, yeah. right? and you just uh, you hope that they just sort of walk away. Yeah, uh, this is uh, well, no, maybe. I'm not doing this because I, I don't want to delve into your life too much beyond what you want to share. But like you know, yeah. there, there there could have if I had had more knowledge mm-hmm. about like broken homes at that time. Yeah, I might have been even with the limited knowledge and resources to help them in some way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. whether it just be advice or just, Hey, like if you need to hang out with someone, just yeah. come hang out. Yeah. Uh, I have my own personal issues, which yeah. I'm still trying to work out, but it's like hiding this reality from It's like the violence. Oh my God. Yeah. It's like people have these ideas about violence Yeah. and yeah. they really have no clue. Yeah. And it's like hiding. So I like, I understand what the left is trying to do is we need to be honest about this stuff, but the way they're going about it is so convoluted obnoxious and not not honest it's disingenuous and yeah. it's there's no real solutions and then on the other side it's like i have friends that are like hardcore american cops that are like no like yeah. this is the stance and i'm like man you guys are so up your head up your ass yeah but we need to have these honest conversations about what the world is like and the reason for your children for yeah. my future children which yeah. maybe in a few years yeah I know people I mean, maybe you do just like I don't want to have kids the world is horrible and I'm like huh yeah have you run into yeah, that yeah no I have um, you know the uh, my brother-in-law um, my wife has two sisters and and a brother and so uh, my brother-in-law who's a you know high school teacher oh uh, joy yeah well my, my my dad both my parents were high school t-shirts so, or teachers right and so that, that, that that's a whole other so you podcast. were supposed to be the professor <laughs> yes i was supposed to be a professor but uh it was interesting like he made um like they they now have a two-year-old and um you know i guess because uh rosemary is rosemary and jason they're like 10 years younger just so you know if you use names yes it goes out on the internet yeah that's true okay <laughs> uh, uh allegedly <laughs> uh, anyway they um you know, they mentioned that uh, they were, they were, th- they talked about a second kid, but they weren't sure because, uh, you know, a lot of, there was information out there about, you know, the effect on the environment, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The environment is, is, uh, our, a big portion of their value set. Yeah. Right. Well, for a lot of people now. Uh, yeah, yeah. For a lot of people. And it made sense. It made sense to me because, uh, I, a while back, I think in 1999, I read a book uh, by David Suzuki called Sacred Balance. And he, he was just talking about the footprint. Right? Yeah. He, you know, if you divide up the globe by the population, everybody's got that footprint. It's collapsing, yeah. right? And uh, and that was the first time that I actually heard, uh, you know, the decision not to have uh, a child was based on sort of environmental yeah. 
principles and uh so david suzuki does not have children yeah well it it is and uh you know where all that kind of unravels a little bit you just kind of go well why the first one then yeah right right. it's sort of um what do you mean by why the first one well because like they somebody said like a second kid is bad for the environment oh yeah yeah. well how is that you know what i mean because of the population control and that's that wasn't their argument but um you just kind of you go about like well if you extrapolate that same argument you gotta you gotta have a darn good reason about the first one right yeah. just so you know that thing you were complaining about that other person you're doing it yeah just <laughs> yeah. be aware <laughs> yeah. um yeah no that's like i know people who are like i don't want to have kids and i'm like well the environmental thing is it drives me nuts because it's like it, it you know, I used to, I went from a weird, like when I was in high school to typical, like I'm much more left wing, yeah. but then I went more, more hard. Right. And then yeah. I'm trying to balance it out now, but it's like to say we are not affecting the planet is delusional. Yes. To say that we are going to destroy the planet if we don't make change in 10 years is also delusional. delusional. Yeah. And then what, quant- well, I understand why they're doing it, but the quandary for me is we have nuclear energy. Mm-hmm. You ask any scientist that isn't lying will say we want nuclear but it's never going to happen right because of the public perception and you're never going to get politics behind po- it behind it because of the fear yeah but it's like a, if you it's like guys have you tried to educate the general public on this topic and yeah. the updates in the last 40 years yeah. that it's not really an issue and we could safely do it there's no nuclear waste on the new reactors etc it's basically impossible yeah. to melt down yeah. Um, and I'm not going to say it's impossible like the Titanic because that happened, but yes. it's like they're not even trying. And it's like, that's why I'm like the whole environmental thing is not what it seems if they're not trying to reeducate people on nuclear energy. Yeah. Because we could easily switch over the world's power grids in a, probably 10 years yeah. to nuclear energy. I had one guy once who got angry with me and I'll, they were a liberal a journalist. <laughs> like, <laughs> they were a journalist who used to do, like, report, like, uh, correspondent reporting. Like, yeah. and, and then now they're just obviously messed up in the head. But they're like, no, the future is particle accelerator physics for new. And I was like. That sounds so complicated. I, I just, it's like, okay, why do I keep hearing about nuclear? And so at the time we had a student who knows very much about particle accelerators. So I'm like, hey, is this what this person is saying is remotely true that we could use this in the next, I don't know, 10 years? He's like, not even close. Like, yeah. not even remotely close. <clears throat> I'm like, okay. But this is a person that's running around as a liberal journalist, these mouthpieces, saying we shouldn't do this. And I'm like, but you're also saying environmental is a problem. Shouldn't we get to clean energy? The answer is nuclear. Everyone, I've heard so many of the world's elite, yeah. intelligent intellectuals like... I, Man, I don't understand why we're not doing nuclear, and it just sort of. Yeah, you know. I, I should. I got to spend some more time, um, n- you know, delving back into nuclear power because uh, we had, like, had, well, have uh, a nuclear reactor in in Ontario, right? It was just, yeah. it was sort of, um, it was east of Toronto, and uh, probably still is if it's an older reactor. Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely it was definitely an older one, but. Um, sometimes I think like the, unfortunately in the eighties, like, uh, nuclear power was hamstringed by this cold war propaganda, yeah. you know, like, uh, the bombs were coming, you yeah. know, and, uh, so there, that East versus West. And then it just sort of quietly disappeared. Yeah. Right. Uh, Probably the oil industry. Uh, yeah. I, you know, like, uh, I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if that was the case. Made yeah. it disappear. It's like when, like, yeah, so, someone can check, but like. When oil started coming, you would see massive things in newspapers at the time saying oil is bad, sponsored by the coal industry. Right. Coal is still around, by the way. And that one I don't understand as much. But it's like there's still a use for a large part for oil in variety of things. It's not going to go away tomorrow. But we have options. (laughs) We do. We do. We do have options, right? And why... um, it seems to be like with a lot of sort of popular opinion, it has to be one thing and absolutely that yeah. one thing. Yeah. And it's just like, well, how come we're not um, generating power from multiple different sources? Right. Yeah. Like, you know, if you go all hydroelectric, well, that has its own environmental problems. Yeah. Right. So if you go all solar, well, 
you know, good luck trying to in find Vancouver. It. That's not happening. Not going <laughs> to happen. But even like, you know, do we really want to fill up deserts with footprints of, um, yeah. you know, panel after panel after panel. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, well, just take a look at the, um, you know, the windmill that's on top of Grouse. It's not moving. <laughs> oh, I never, barely, you know, you can only see it on a super clear day, but uh, it's, uh, I'd never paid much attention. To no, that. It, it can't even generate enough power to like, you know, yeah. uh, for, um, on the top of a mountain, <laughs> on top of a mountain. Um, and, you know, I'd have to, you know, don't want to make too many assumptions, but no one has ever, uh, if you go up to Grouse, like I don't see any signage that says, Hey, this entire area is powered by this, you know, windmill up here, right? They're, yeah. they're not, they're not making bold claims yeah. around it. So again, you know, you kind of need a blend of things, which is, you know, like on that, cause the younger generation, well, my generation and younger are, are like, you can't talk them out of this environmental thing. It's not a bad thing. You know, I was talking about the, you know what we should fix the plastic pollution in the ocean. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. one that like we literally, that's for sure us. You can't get away from it. No one's putting much effort except that one teenager who's built that. Yeah. Thing that, like... uh, and <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that's uh, man. Was I super impressed with that? Not only like, I appreciate what they're trying to do in with the garbage patch, yeah. but I think the for me, the groundbreaking thing that that organization came up with was just like, well, why aren't we going to the source, which is like the rivers, right? Yeah. So those interceptor, um, you know, boats are just, I think are fantastic. Yeah. Probably take 20 years to clean that up if oh, they, everyone tries. It, yeah. And, um, you know, this, the amount, you know, coming down, it's almost like you need a permanent installation, yeah. right? Now, to sort of clean it up. Cause you know, me and my partner, let's say have made a decision, assuming we're still together in five, <laughs> 10 years, who knows? Um, Hopefully. Um, yeah. And we have kids. We were like, we are homeschooling. And, and mm-hmm. the reason is we don't like what the school systems are doing now. Right. How do you find that? Do the kids come home? Don't throw them under the bus too much. But no. do they come home saying ideas that they learn that you're just like facepalm? Like, I cannot fathom this or... Uh, I'm not talking about like basic math. But... Yeah, no. Um, I think like any... There, there's nothing that has made me sort of, you know, fold the newspaper down and go, wait, what, <laughs> you know, like, what, what, what are you learning? Um, I think that's just a, you know, what is borrowing heavily against that is like, well, both my parents were, were public school teachers. Yeah. Right. And, um, you know, and I still talk to my dad, you know, quite a bit, uh, about curriculum and, even he disagrees with things that are being taught now, but you know, like he said, he's, he's out of the game now. Yeah. Right. Um, what I sort of, you know, bankroll, uh, a lot of this is one, I don't personally want to pay for private school education. Yeah. Right? Like a homeschooling. We have met uh, quite a few parents that have homeschooled and, uh, they've done a fantastic job with yeah. the curriculum and the kids are, you know, definitely well balanced. Um, if you do it right, if you do it right, <laughs> but like anything else, like it's intense, right? Yeah. Like it, it requires a lot of time, energy and effort. Um, and the other thing like with public school education, what the most parents sort of forget is that you're not let off the hook, no. right? So the kids are coming back. They've learned something, right? You still have to, even though you've technically, I guess, outsourced it, to um you know the teachers in the school you still have to spend a lot of time with your kids about what they learned what does it mean yeah. how is it going to apply um with the things that they're doing and uh really it's it's a point of uh engagement um i have seen the burnaby public school system you know petitioned on i guess uh you know for lack of better terms uh modern philosophy on uh orientation and health and all that kind of stuff and uh, whether I agree with it or not, I gotta, I have to take some time to say, okay, what is exactly that they're learning? And just like, all right, um, there's going to be a point in time and with Chloe and Finn that I'm not there. Yeah. Right. So this is more, I'm more underwriting their skill of what they've learned in public education. Just like, okay, well, how are you going to digest this so that it's not, um, not something that defines who you are, but like anything else you've learned it, yeah. what's its application? And how does it relate to the next thing you're going to learn? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like we were talking about, there's certain things that people are like, why isn't this in the standard education? Why isn't this it? like everyone is saying it and it's not. Yep. And the one that we like to come back to in, in our other discussion is the financial literacy. 
That's you know. that's a big one, um, and I feel that's been lacking in just general education. Uh, we were talking about how, like, you know, the martial arts is things I want. I'm wanting the kids to learn because it's something. You know, if I could go back in time, that's something yeah. I would have done, right? So physical we, literacy, uh, physical literacy. But yeah. the same, like, I was terrible with money. Yeah, it, my wife had to set me straight. Um, <laughs> I'm you in know. the same boat, oh, except yeah. not like it. <laughs> oh, you know, for. For someone who held a job since uh, he was 11, I haven't had two dimes to rub together until yeah. basically like 2001. Yeah. Um, and so... Wait, I just... How old were you then? 2001? Yeah. Let's, uh, I was 26. Ah, oh, you beat me. Because I'm like in my th- early 30s now and I'm like, same situation yeah. <laughs> being what she does for a living. So I'm like... Like, yeah, yeah. Well, at, at 26, I think I moved up from not having two dimes to rub together to having two quarters to rub yeah. together, right? So... Um, uh, it, it was a it was a very long sort of uh, rehabilitation process, um, but financial literacy absolutely like just yeah. um, I bought uh, Chloe a book called Clever Girl Financial, and it wasn't sort of like a hey you know you're a girl let's empower you type of thing. It was uh, isn't uh, that the trendy thing to do now? Yeah, exactly. No, it was more along like you know basically you know some very smart women put together some books that just said like you don't have to embroil this in sort of gender right? yeah. this is this is how we that's how it should be it's yeah. not making everything about that shit yeah. but anyways it's just sort of you know very strong examples right and for finn i got him this great book says i want more pizza right <laughs> and the, the philosophy of the book was just like you know yeah you can have a slice of the pie but why not yeah. have the whole thing right and uh, it was just more along the lines of um you know, poses the question, yeah, you've, um, you got a job, you know, you're pulling down some cash, you know, if it becomes everything and all of a sudden that source is gone, yeah, then a lot of people struggle with finding new employment because their identity is gone. Right. Yeah. And it's just sort of like, well, you got to build up, you got to, you know, be not boring with money. You have to learn to be sort of adventurous, learn how to yeah. take risk learn how to manage it. And, uh, no matter what you do, the bills will keep coming. Yeah. They just, they don't end. There'll only ever be more. Yes, exactly. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, who knows, you, you know, where, where they go with it. But, uh, um, I definitely want them to learn this stuff before because I knew how to manage money. I just did it poorly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I knew how to do it. Like, you know, I haven't, if they ever list, not that they're ever going to, they, I don't think they know what a podcast is, but Let's say I have some family. Mm-hmm. This family has connections and, and finances, and they're quite well off. And they've done, they're very uh, quietly generous people and have helped out some of the other family that are not good uh, with this stuff. But I'm just like sitting here now, and they've done, they've done it for me, and it's appreciated. But I'm mm-hmm. like, just sitting down, I'm thinking about it, I'm like, what I really needed was access to your advisors. Yes. And I needed advice that was meaningful mm-hmm. and actually guidance. And what you find is people get so wrapped up in their own thing. If mm-hmm. they don't genuinely care about, like, I mean, they do care, but it's like if they don't really care about you mm-hmm. to ask the questions and get involved in a, in a, a real mentorship fashion, like a good parent should, yeah. uh, it's use, useless. Like mm-hmm. you look at lottery winners, how many of them are uh, bankrupt? Yeah, have spent all their money. Or how many sports guys are bankrupt? You know, you can talk about the head trauma thing too, but it's like you teach a man a fish, they eat, you know, or you give yeah. a man a fish they eat for a day, yeah. you give a, teach him to fish. And it's like people just don't want to give people the skills because I think a lot of the time it's about their own emotional state. And mm-hmm. I, I'm, not, I'm just speculating because we're all human is that mm-hmm. it makes me feel good to give, but you're not really helping. No, no, you're not. You know, and you need to give people the skills to do it for themselves. Yep. And that will make the world a better place. Yep. But what yep. we're getting is people, whether, as I said, the people I know, they're good people. Yeah. They're very generous. They help a lot of people. Yeah. But it's like you could be taking it to the next level yep. if you're really taking the collective family or collective group around you and saying, listen, I'm going to pay for some financial literacy courses for all of you. I'm going to pay yeah. for this. Like, let's make sure you're on the right track so you're set for life. Yeah. Let's just say somebody I know did something <laughs> like that for one of their family members and that person, there's some, compl- there's some yeah. issues that had they not got that advice and that help, 
Yeah. They're in big trouble in life. But yeah. now because of that advice and that help, they don't have to do much for the next 15, 20 years. Yes. Yeah. Or, or they're definitely more in the case of, um, you know, they lose a job. Yeah. That, uh, it's like, oh, okay, well, I'll just go find another and not have to feel that pressure. Like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Yeah. Right. So like that, that's just, um, uh, you know, a bad feeling. And I'm hoping that, you know, with, with the kids that, uh, not only would they take this sort of this new learning that we've sort of imparted, but they can also sort of look back at, um, I don't, maybe they don't even realize, but when they, when, let's see, it was 2011 that I lost a job. Uh, I just decided to go back to graduate school. Yeah. So I took on that bill and we also bought a house, right? Yeah. So fun time. Fun, fun time. What were your studies in again? Uh, let's see. Undergrad. I did actually did, a, I did two degrees. I did one in uh, history and another one in uh, science degree in kinesiology. Yeah. And, uh, and then I did my MBA at, uh, right. at UBC. Quite, quite a diverse set of skills. <laughs> yeah. Div- diverse set of skills. Um, and, uh, but, you know, by that point, you know, uh, Sarah, my, you know, <laughs> uh, ever so wise spouse, yeah. you know, had sort of whipped us into shape, you know, financially. So when, um, you know, the income was gone, we, you know, had sort of backup and reserves. And um, I also demonstrate to the kids that, um, you know, your job doesn't necessarily define you, right? Yeah. You have bills to pay. That's yeah. that's number one. But how you bring in money, you can switch things. Like I brought in money through film. I've been directors. Uh, I've done it through trucking. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, just a, sort of. You can like, direct, but you can't touch the bike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Right. Sort of like um, sort of demonstrating, you know, a lot of things that I had learned over the years that, uh, you know, there's a few simple steps that you can do. Yeah. Right. So that when you do, um, experience a windfall or a loss, yeah. you know what to do. Yeah. Right. Um, and uh, you know, the reverse question, like, okay, you, you know, somebody just gives you a hundred thousand dollars. What are you going to do with it? Yeah. There are nine out of 10 times, probably something stupid. Yeah. Right. And now it's, uh, do you know the phrase learn to code? Uh, I think Finn said something. Yeah, yeah. So it's been highly politicized because, again, this is what we're talking about. The politicians get a hold of something of, right. and they don't really understand what, that, what the fuck they're talking about. Now, I find it still kind of arrogant, uh, but it's, it, I believe it comes from a guy named Naval Ramakan, and I, everyone needs to listen to this guy okay. in ge- as a general rule. The guy is just a brilliant human. Man, you should hear what he's saying about COVID. And it's, he thinks it's a con too. Not right. like it's a real thing, real yes. thing, just how it's been handled. Our is reaction it, to and, it. And so this guy's a brilliant human. Like he's up in the echelons of tech and all these things. Yeah. But he basically said, uh, learn to code. That's the future. Learn to code. code. What he really, if you really break down what he's really saying is that you need to learn to pivot. Mm. Yeah. And I, I don't know if he always does a good job explaining it because, you know, if you're always around the smartest, most wealthy people in the world, like he's friends with like Elon and all these yeah. pe- people. But he, Naval is one of the people who advises yeah. other people because yeah. he's so brilliant. Um, but it, it's that the world is changing at a f- pace that's unlike anything we've ever seen before. Seen before yeah. For sure. So when, you know, our parents are like, well, when, well, in me, not yet. When, well, you wait till you have kids. And I'm like, listen, for thousands of years, mm-hmm. that worked. That advice was true because the older, wiser person survived for reasons. Not like that anymore. Yeah. And the pace is, and the, and the learn to code is that the future is in computing. And that basically what they're, the powers that be are planning basically to eliminate blue collar work. Mm. It, it's, 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 it's coming. Right. Now, I think they're being incredibly naive about this That because they'll always be like, oh, you'll just be do arts and creative things. And I'm like, some people aren't like that. You're no. going to see a lot of people just smashing shit and blowing shit up and we'll go back to the Stone Age because you guys have not thought this through yet. <laughs> yeah. But the, the sentiment behind it is that you need to pivot. Yes. And the future of the next 20 years is, well, if we're getting rid of the blue collar jobs, coding is one thing that humans can do mm. and learning to program the robots that were gotcha. whatever the masters and of the so domain they're saying you need to do that but at the same time i'm like you're not teaching that third generation coal miner in wherever to code yeah. that's not happening no well you need to get over yourself for it. and from a brutal perspective they are kind of correct in yeah. that 
that's how evolution works. You sink or swim, but it's like in our modern society, particularly on the left, they don't want anyone to fail or sink. Ever. Yes. Yeah. And it's like, you got these conflicting things and so we understand evolution is a process it's a thing uh, i'm not talking about the evolution of species even mm-hmm. just like technological evolution or, or whatever mm-hmm. not everyone's gonna come with that thing so you got one group of people that's trying to bring the bottom along right. all the way with them and then you got the other people that's like completely del- delusional yep. about the rest of the world yep and it's yep. like it's going to, if it works and we don't destroy ourselves, it's going to be some like patchwork. Somehow it works yeah. and no one really knows why. It's like the Star Trek universe. Yeah. Well, that's, um, you know, that learn to pivot. I would, I would wholeheartedly agree on that. Um, well, I'll just, you know, uh, I think I've had three different careers since, yeah. uh, you know, I've left um, undergrad. And um, even within that career, I think I had five or six different employers. Yeah. Right. Um but I, I think, you know, just sort of like dovetail in terms of that philosophy of learn to pivot quickly. Um, I think there also has to be a, a significant amount of time helping people get over the stigmatism of failure. Yeah. Oh, I uh, it, it, you know, like you, you can't you can't pivot without acknowledging and being good at failing, you know, yeah. fail forward, fail quickly, yeah. you know, um, sort of move on and uh it's uh you know you remove the emotion out yeah. of it and uh, once people stop attacking themselves like it's like you know failure's not a comment on who you are yeah you took a risk it didn't work yeah. you better move on right yeah. so it's a very interesting topic i think because like if you look at elon musk mm-hmm. everyone is like dude sunk cost get over it get out get yeah. over it and he's like nope 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 yep and that happens uh but the reality is is nine out of ten times most of the time people fail mm-hmm. now we all hear like the traditional billionaire story is they plotted along and all of a sudden in their sixties, they were worth a billion dollars and yeah. the new tech industry has worked that. And yeah. then we also hear stories of people who were bums until their forties or fifties and then something just clicked and boom, yeah, they're they worth a hundred million dollars. Yeah. Right. Um, so it's a, it's a, I think it's a complicated topic because one, you need to learn to fail because the one, if you look at advice books or advice, Mm. you'll see some common themes. And one of them is learn from your failures, not your successes. It's like consistent. Yes. Um, So it's certainly true, but it's like, is the reason I'm failing because it's a bad idea or Mm. is it, I'm just not executing it well. And it's, that's a question that people need to ask a lot is like is it a bad idea or is it just needs more execution or is it sometimes it is a money issue yep um yep. that you just need more money in my case i needed better advice yes right? yes um money did not solve the problems it was advice yep. that i need to start looking at things a different way um sometimes you need someone else to come with a different perspective and, and the attitude the one the issue with the learn to code pivot thing is they're expecting everyone to pick it up on themselves sometimes it's like you no can't you, you can't it's just um, it just takes hours and hours yeah. and hours, right? Um, I actually had the opportunity to, um, when I finished, uh, you know, my MBA, um, I got invited back uh, by the faculty to uh, work with physicians on leadership projects mm. that they had. And uh, I got to take a unique approach to it because uh, for my final project, um, there was a... Um, a book, cancer treatment booking software, mm. right? And they wanted to know, can, you know, it worked well in this one health authority, but can it go to market? Yeah. Right? Can they develop sort of a social enterprise around it? And at the end of the day, it was no, yeah. right? Um, because it, oh, for a whole plethora of issues, but... Legal, unions, uh, yeah. different labor laws, blah, 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 privacy laws. Uh, yeah, all <laughs> that kind of stuff. But uh, this w- it was one of those sort of um, watershed moments where you get connected to the right mentor right and so yeah. as opposed to um the faculty connected me to um basically a guy who worked with a lot of entrepreneurs mm. right uh, through ubc and uh so i presented him all this all this groundbreaking research right that would support the idea and he completely unraveled me yeah. by going I find this very frustrating. I can see that you spend a lot of time, you know, researching, but n- zero minutes actually talking to people who might actually, you know, buy this and be implemented. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And so then I spent the next six weeks, like talking to anyone, yeah. right. About 
the problems the solve the software was trying to actually solve and whether or not it would apply to their problems and you know at the end of the day what i took to a lot of these sort of uh, projects uh, you know with these physicians and i'm like how many people have you actually talked to about your idea yeah and they're like well i haven't it's just going to work i'm like you have absolutely no idea yeah and you know the the interesting thing about you know with these physicians they were all a type personalities yeah. very successful people don't tell me that <laughs> uh, yeah well you know that's the thing and like they probably unknowingly would pivot quickly right? because you know they would uh, process they could process a lot of information they can adjust and all that kind of stuff but when it came to actually putting yeah. an opinion out there for comment yeah uh, amongst you know colleagues is one thing, but out in the open is, is another. And well, I think that particular issue is actually a flaw in academics mm-hmm. in yep. that you don't talk about the studies that didn't show what you wanted to, and it's a huge yes. problem. Like yes. I had a talk with the, one of the few professors I respected, uh, it's Dr. Farhad Duster, I think. Um, most of them, I think, are just hacky PhDs who didn't belong anywhere near a university. Right. Um, you know, my humble opinion. <laughs> but uh, it was that the, one of the problems with academics, doctors included, is publish or perish, or now it's publish or, like, it's getting more complicated yes. considering a lot of uh, academic publishing peer review is falling apart. Yeah. Like, it's not being what it's supposed to be. And they'll de- defend it to the death, but it's instead of writing a new thesis for a master's, why don't you redo someone else's work and see if it's actually, you know, can it be replicated like true scientific and make that the norm. And we will actually make academics and science so much more efficient. Mm -hmm. Like you see that with, you know, the COVID, the, the, the vaccines, like the MRNA stuff, you know, at first I was like, this is a new tech. We need to be cautious, but it's like, you saw everyone communicating with each other finally and sharing their ideas for the most part. Yeah. And can we do it this way? Can we do it that way? And you can see, oh, like that, you know, I was listening to something that is, what did they call it? Bioconservatism. Bioconservatism. That's a new term. Yes. I, haven't, I haven't come across and that it, one. And it was to do with that the medical industry is extremely cautious, yeah. like overly cautious in North America in particular. Because like, let's say we do, uh, um, the medicine in Germany is way ahead of us in Canada. Okay. Because they're all, they allow more experimenting and more progress. Here it's okay. ethics and this and that. Yeah, it's so very bio, strong ethical protocols. So bioconservatism, whether it be driven by religious ideologies or lawyers, right? Um, it's don't do that. We might get sued. Don't do that yes. because of religious content. Don't do that because of this. Liability driven. And you know, I've always had to like I when even I was just doing psychology, and I always thought the ethics was like insane here. Mm-hmm. Well, we don't want people to... Dis- I'm like, hey, if they're consenting adults and they've agreed, well, you can't even compensate them. I'm like, why the fuck not? Well, it'll skew it, will it? Yeah. They don't know what the fuck the experiment is. Yeah. Like, what do you mean we can't pay them? That's unethical. Why is that unethical? Yeah. Right? Like, it may skew it a little bit, but it's like, can we get the data moving somewhere? Yeah. Can Bef- we do something? Can we get it moving? And and so basically COVID, they got like got rid of a lot of the red tape around it studies and experimentation Mm because one of the criticisms against studies is like oh you had a 20 person study group Mm -hmm. with all it's all like let's say white males yeah that's not representative of the population and now you have 30 40 50 60 thousand diverse groups of people in the study groups it's like oh now we're doing science guys yes right you know critical at first because other factors but yeah. it's like now they're starting so this, this i forgot who i was listening to is they're like now we can get rid of bioconservatism a little bit because it's become more accepted to let them kind of do their thing mm-hmm. we might see some incredible advances in medical tech as a result and now they, they were like that's the only positive thing i saw out of COVID. right everything else is just a bunch of nonsense but the, you know the fact that we can move science like meaningfully forward a little bit now they stripped a lot it seems like they stripped a lot of the barriers down right which yeah. are just sort of making the pace too slow too slow exactly right. like and, and you know the whole we always the conservative liberal thing and i've started asking people like what do you define as because it from country to country it's different yes. from region to region to different from city to city and it's like we need to, there's a lot of like muddling yes of 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 what stuff is i think yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. um well you know like you get people's perspective like their own personal views 
then layer on top like sort of like some of the cultural complications yeah. and any type of any type of administrative body and then you you know you throw in some uh, 30 years of or 40 years or 50 years depending on how long that administrative body's been around that yeah. tradition and just you know the question well we don't do it we've never done it that way yeah right and then we refuse we refuse and then um and then you That's get maybe what they call the deep state like that's yeah. literally what it is <laughs> exactly and then you get a few um you know you get a few published pieces that have followed all the rules yeah. you know uh avoided all the landmines gotten published in you know a decent journal um you know and then uh does anybody read it yeah right <laughs> you know like I, it sort of gets put out into the ether and yeah. somebody celebrates you know that one that one moment in their uh, academic career where they got that done but then you know how many times um do they get notified that they've been cited yeah, you know, and did it actually make a difference? Well, Which is hilarious. Like know. Jordan Peterson's been cited so like a lot before he got famous, right? Like hundreds of times, right? He was legit, right? And now people are trying to bring him down because he's successful, right? And he's helping people. No, you're you know, not allowed to make money. You, you can't know, help people. You're supposed to fall into the dusty archives like the rest of us. And then when it destroyed him, you know, he he he's talking about it now. His uh, benzodiazepine addiction. And all sorts of yeah, it's bad, and it's people like oh you see, oh it's like oh you see he's human, right? He's helped more people than you, and he's human. What? <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> come yeah. on, man. <laughs> and, and it's 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 you know like that's the thing I think you know as a parent it's like how do you teach people to wade through this without them losing their minds? without losing their minds? <laughs> um, yeah, like. Uh, well, you know, you know, from the parenting perspective, um, you know, with, with both my kids and I just, I find I spend, I'm spending more time trying to help them walk through an opinion that yeah. they may have. Right. And, you know, every now and then throw a stiff jab, <laughs> you know, but like just disagree with them and see what happens. Yeah. Um, I, 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 Playing devil's advocate. Right? Yeah, yeah, devil's advocate, uh, you know, so to speak. And um, uh, I think that, like, one of the most heartbreaking things um, that I've seen, you know, and not just in my kids but in others, is just sort of a genuine feeling of despair that even with youth, like, they can't keep up with the information. Yeah. I don't think that's a youth thing, though. I think that's a people thing. Yeah, well, you know, but, you know, when you see it in your own kids um, and, you know, you the traditional sort of reassuring comments that the world is going to be okay and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Like you're fighting against mass media where pe anyone can produce and publish anything, you know, at any time, at any moment. And yeah. it takes so much energy. Even effort. John, the Krav Maga instructor can produce stuff. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, but that's, uh, <laughs> that's all scientifically based and sound. Of course. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, oh, there's some podcasts I'm sure I'm like, I've said that thing, like, ah, crap, oh well. It didn't work, but oh, <laughs> yeah, on to the next one. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, like modern modern parenting, um, I think in the end, I just, I felt it like I just had to go back to basics. One, I had to, you know, be confident in myself yeah. and my value set and realize that you know, um, I will make mistakes. However, you know, all I can do is, uh, you know, I keep, I keep their well being in the front. Yeah. Right. Um, and, uh, you just kind of, you know, sort of plot forward and, uh, you know, for new parents, the one thing I, <laughs> I always say, I, I generates a lot of resentment, some anger, um, is I, think new parents avoid all the parenting books yeah all of them just stay um, away from them just stay away from them uh you know maybe one or two like i think there's a classic you know what to expect when you're expecting oh, yeah. um and uh, you know because like you know that you're you're sort of you got two feet um in different worlds but um uh, and you know you know for some parents that are legitimately struggling i think it, you know the the basics like going to talk to people that that's about it but re reading like go to the self-help yeah. section books and you know there's there's a whole market around it and i noticed this in a lot of professional education it's sort of it, you get this genuine feeling that you're incompetent so you got to keep paying money 
you know, for this yeah. advice, you know, to help you be better at something. It's just like, well, um, doing like there's children have been raised for a couple of millennia, right? Yeah. Like I don't see longer how, than that, you I know, think. you know, longer, <laughs> longer than that. And, um, you know, like if you, Do you apl- want, uh, by the way, yeah, uh, I'll, you know, crack that open. <laughs> yeah, I'll take the beer, please. Um, we're not drinking. No, no we're not drinking and talking. Um, I'm going to well, screw this up. Keep going. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm just trying to, trying to collect myself here. Um, cause I, I have a tendency, I have to talk to think, um, if that makes any sense, which I be, do it. Is it obvious that I do that? Oh, yeah. No, so it can be pretty painful for those listening. <laughs> I'm working through ideas. Yeah, working through. Uh, cheers. Um, you know, the if you have a few peers, you know, that you can trust and sort of, you know, bounce ideas off. And uh, obviously, there's, there's a few things that you kind of pick up along the way. If somebody points something, you know, that's good. But... Um, don't sell yourself to the, um, the you know, the, um, parenting advice market. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a, go back to your own set of values and allow yourself to be open. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, you know, accept that you're going to make mistakes and, you know, the fact, uh, you can see a lot of parents that do, you know, neglectful things and that's unfortunate, but if you are, if you are taking care of yourself, and you're taking care of you know your family you can't you just sort of know yeah you're making the effort it's when the lack of effort creeps in that's when problems start yeah to not, and it's uh with my partner like like kids are on the table let's just say and uh john has issues etc let's just say there are issues on the table and i'm always like like you, you're on this race where you don't want to have them too late but you need to sort out your own shit yeah first and it's uh you know kind of that bioconservatism I, i'm not going to get into the specifics too much but there's i'll tell you off the record yeah. but the i think a lot of the answers have been found mm-hmm. to a lot of things and they're buried whether because of greed or yeah. the bioconservatism and i have, I have no secrets about my my mental health issues mm-hmm. uh depression etc i have taken some substances Mm -hmm. that are not frowned upon in vancouver per se but aren't exactly (laughs) in other places maybe in in other places it's very still frowned upon and i can say i i got my hands on something recently that i wish i'd taken when i was younger because i had access to it Mm -hmm. and uh it has it's a recent change. I don't know if you've noticed the change in my state. You, it's, I'm priming you now, so it's a bit of a thing. But yeah, <laughs> the, it made such a profound change in my internal yeah biology in your thinking. No, not even a or little just bit. Your chemistry to help stabilize the biochemistry. Your okay, and I'm like, man, this thing has been demonized and misrepresented. Mm-hmm. And of course, there are, is research being done on it now. Mm-hmm legally in in america as well and canada it's probably all going to be legalized in the next five years to ten mm-hmm. years and i'm just like fuck the pharmaceutical companies and the doctors yeah fuck all of them yep because they knew about this like this Long particular one ago. 30 40 years ago maybe and because it's common use is like i don't want to say too much because it'll give away what it is but because it's common use is it's seen as an escape thing to take mm. yet it's turning out to be like having mind bogglingly positive effects. And I, you know, I was on antidepressants a long time ago. I'm not on them anymore. And, uh, the different, the difference, the, the antidepressants are a band aid. Okay. This is a cure. Right. Like I can say with profound, like, holy shit, life changing sort of realization. Yeah. And it's <clears> like, it's, if you take this stuff properly, like, and, and I'm not, I'm not going to say what it is. I don't want people to take it because I know myself and I'm educated and I'm very attuned with my body, but I also know a lot of people aren't. That's the next podcast. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of people just aren't. And as you know, it's, it's an advice, like, let's say uh, to go off on that tangent, like teaching martial arts, some people, natural athletes, they know their body like this. Mm-hmm. Other people do not. And it's painful for them. It's painful for me. It's painful for everybody. 
And for those people, if they want to learn, they got to put in the time. Yeah. The same will be for understanding your body. Like for me, I know for a fact, this is not ego. It's I have never been wrong going to the doctor. Mm. I don't go to the doctor on nothing. Right. I'm like thought about it and I'm like this. They've been wrong more than yes. I have. So I'm coming from a perspective of someone who really understands how, what's right or wrong with my body. Right. I do safe experimentation. And the only reason this stuff is becoming legal now or the research is being done is because rich people who give a shit yeah. are paying for the research. Yes. As opposed to rich people who don't or the government right. who plays politics. And it's like a lot of the answers are there. Mm -hmm. It's like, for example, philosophical stuff with the Greeks. They came up with a lot of the answers already. Right. And we are just like, no, they're old. They don't know anything. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, no, they figured it out. Like yeah. what it means to be human. I think a lot of them figured that already. Yeah. And we're just like, and I, I don't want to read the liter Greek literature. I get the gist of it because it's for me, it's painful to sit down. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I tried reading Homer's Odyssey once and I was like, nope. <laughs> yeah. No, it's sort of beyond me as well. Yeah. No, <laughs> Even I, tried, I tried that one. Yeah. Um, well, in terms of like the, the notion um, that you mentioned, like, you know, parenting, like getting yourself your own stuff sort of, um, sorted out before you know being responsible for like a, a another human being and it's definitely i think there's certain levels to that right like if you're you know if you have a hard time holding down like you know any type of employment and you know relationship like whereas i've i've met people like where their life is just one moment of addictive instability right that that yeah. is that is their drug instability right that that's that's not helpful um but you know myself and like um i've struggled with with anger yeah you know who I, has it <laughs> yeah who has well just sort of like a you know detrimental type of you know like rage same boat <laughs> yeah same there you go um and you know was it sorted out before my kids were born uh no but it's something you know i just realized that that is going to be part of me right like yeah. there, there's no end to sorting that out but the waves, you know, the um, the realization, the self-realization of the effects that it has on others. Yeah, that, you know, that yeah. uh, came um, to a good sort of, that came to a head uh, pretty early, you know, and uh, just sort of like, okay, it's something, it's something I got to work on, right? All the time. Yeah. Right. It never, it never ends. Um, and so, you know, even like uh, my oldest friend, you know, he was always worried. Uh, he didn't have kids till later uh, as well. And uh, him and his, uh, you know, partner have, um, you know, a five-year-old daughter now. And, you know, he was, he, I remember he called me up and he's asked me, he's just like, I, I don't know. You know, like, yeah. I just, uh, I'm worried about, you know, myself. And I'm just like, yeah, but that, you know, Steve, <laughs> sorry, name on the internet. You again. can say whatever you yeah, want. Yeah. Um, you know, just like, be aware. <laughs> just be aware. Like, that's never really going to go away. Yeah. Right. Um it's funny like I, I i've heard people say like oh there's the right time and a wrong time yeah. <laughs> like or there's the time where you just find out like this is happening right yeah. and uh you just kind of you know you, you dive into it and um at first you know like the kids are, are going to be sort of a reflection of your own values and the the fun times is when they start developing their own. Right? Yeah. And that's when you spend more time like teenagers. I gotta, what? <laughs> yeah. You got to spend more time on yourself. Right. Like yeah. I just like, I got to wire my stuff together because yeah, yeah. now there's someone who's arguing back. Yeah. Right. And I can't, I can't just say bedtime or get angry or, yeah. you know, say, well, there's no skiing if you don't agree with me. Now imagine teenage John. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I've all, I came out running arguing. Like, yeah, exactly. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, tears to your parents. Yeah, <laughs> right. No, no, they're good people. It's uh, I'm just a different kind of human. I think sometimes, <laughs> but it's like you know the figure. I think the wokeism mm. is a giant mental health issue. I for, struggle with wokeism. Yeah, it's I well because yeah, I'm trying to. I'm generally trying to understand the other side. Yep. Yep. And it's like. I think it's a mental health issue. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's coming down to that. It's a mental health issue. It's that what you're talking about, people are so overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. I want it better now. Right. And because 90s parenting of don't say no mm -hmm. and don't put boundaries, and that goes yeah. against any solid, <clears throat> reasonably scientific-based uh, approach to parenting, 
authoritarian, not uh, what's the word? Authoritative, not authoritarian. Terry, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's confusing, but basically, you need to be firm, have boundaries, but allow them to grow. Is the most healthy. You're gonna fuck up, but yep. it's the most healthy way. Not the this is my house, my rules. That's yeah. authoritarian. Terry, yeah, that never works. Which doesn't work because you turn out little psychos. And then uh, the other way is the let them do it. Let the kid be the. I forgot the name now, but let the kid be the parent. Yeah. And then it's I'm yeah. there. For, like it's like this doesn't. You guys, there's one that from evidence shows, and it's like zero to five. Like the kid doesn't know what the fuck. Two things from a cognitive perspective. Mm-hmm. They're sponges at that age. Yes. And one thing Western education has completely failed is accepting how much they can actually learn. Just yep. because they can't articulate it to you doesn't mean they haven't learned it. It's there. Right. Right. The, you know, studies to do with like uh, music in the womb and that it's there. Mm-hmm. They are picking up so much information. That's why they say it's one of the key, key periods is zero to five um, versus the Asian one. That's like, no, you go now. And it's like, they don't, they're too much the other way. Um, you a doctor yet? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jews Just a family too, guy, right? right? Um, and it's, it's then when they can start asking the why. You know, they can start perceiving the world around them. Mm-hmm. There are actually cognitive tests that are like 100% accurate or within margin of error to tell if they're in the stage of cognitive development yet. Uh, the one of the, I forgot what age, but like, for example, if you put a blanket over an object and they realize it's still there, they're, mm-hmm. oh, you know, they've hit the next like cognitive Yeah, the faculty. learning. Yeah. And then you still have to start giving them the answers and developing the critical thinking at that age to preteens. And then the preteens and teenagers like, where they're learning who are they yeah and that's when the peer groups start becoming the very, um, very important yes right so uh, if you did your the hard parenting is zero from from this is from a yep. yeah, research yeah. perspective uh is zero to 12 or 13 now where western society is fucked up is that teenage age we're trying to control too much and we're yeah. trying to protect too much and we're trying to do this too much. Yeah. And it's produced from the 90s parenting of helicopter parenting yes. and clean and da, 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 and it, it, there's so much evidence from a scientific perspective. So anyone who's like, no, you're making that that was not a smart decision. And you're looking at the repercussions now yeah. of a giant group of mentally ill ch- men or adult children, men, women yeah. who don't know how to s- learn if they don't know how to fail. Yeah. They don't know how to do things for themselves. They're blaming everybody else in society. Yep. And it's a giant mental health issue that's going on. Now, some of the ideas they're pushing, as we discussed with the me- the medical thing you were talking about with mm-hmm. your doctors, the idea itself is a good idea. Yeah. The execution, however... Is the problem. Is the, is the problem. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, how do you tell these people? And then you have these fucking sycophantic... Not sycophantic. <laughs> like narcissistic, <laughs> self-centered politicians who are manipulating these hordes of people mm-hmm. to get what they want. Always, uh, uh, you know, classic sort of more money, essentially more money, um, you know, s- stay in power um, in terms of, you know, you know, back to the, the sort of, I guess uh, with the wokeism and, you know, I, I'm curious to see how that is going to um, affect parenting dynamics, <laughs> right? Because, um, I know it like, you know, in our house, we, we argue about this, like all the time, like all of us. Yeah. And, um, I, debate. I, if you make it a debate, it's healthy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I didn't buy the parenting books, right? Yeah. Um, uh, okay. Do, you know, do, the, the healthy debate, um, I think, you know, at the, when my kids are of adult age and when they, you know, they sort of go out into the world, all I want them to be able to do is, um, again, have their own set of values and go out into the world. Yeah. Right. Uh, and so argument is going to come, yeah. right. Whether they like it or not. Um, and also that, uh, I think a big important thing is that I'm allowed to disagree, yeah. right. That person across the table from you is allowed to, disagree right Found the guy original i disagree slap <laughs> zoom <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly back when i used to watch it. yeah so many is the you know maybe maybe that's the parenting book we all need is the family guy you know the family definitely guy not <laughs> um you know and uh I, you know not to um 
with the with the wokeism stuff i sometimes i feel like i've reached my vcr moment oh, yeah. you know like my dad could not program the the clock on the vcr yeah. for the life of him yeah. where you know like <laughs> And I, I guess that's where I'm, uh, you know, maybe it's the next phase of parenting where I'm, you know, I have to respect my kids' opinions because they're developing some pretty strong ones. I that, wonder why. It, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> it's uh, a mild, indo- it, I'm not, it's a little bit of indoctrination. Yeah. Now, I want to keep, you want you to keep, because that's why I was saying, yeah. like, I'm being a bit aggressive with let some of your children is yeah. that I know they have not heard the other side of the argument. Oh yeah, exactly. You know? And uh, hence, you know, why we're always there on Sundays, yeah. right? Um, <laughs> it's Sunday church. Yeah. It's a, uh, you know, it's a whole, it's a whole new gospel. Mm. Um, but you know, there's so much value um, regardless of what has become popular opinion, or if it's something that's genuinely necessary, you know, to sort of induce some changes that it has to come down to some, civility and debate and you need you need participants yeah right and um you know if you have been indoctrinated by it you know a certain um philosophy probably one of the best things you can do is have somebody just take a hammer to it yeah try and try and chisel it because like in the end it's just going to shape something better yeah um and uh so i i'm you know, in terms of parenting on, on that style, like, uh, I, I think it's going to be an interesting, you know, few years, especially yeah. when they, when they go off, if yeah. they, and I've encouraged them both, like go, if you want to go to university, go to university, yeah. right. If you want to do a trade, go do a trade, do a bit of yeah. both. Yeah. Right. And then see what happens. You know, uh, I found out she's quite woke. So I was very disappointed, but there's a site there, a very famous counselor therapist, Benet Brown. Mm-hmm. And she, one thing that she said that I liked was about her kid. She said, I'm not paying for your university if you're telling me what you know you want to do. Right. She's like, you are taking classes that you do not want to take. You're just taking them because it's something else. Right. And then actually it worked because the, 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 her daughter ended up doing something completely different. It's like, I knew it. Yeah. She went full woke, though, on some other thing. I was like, oh, I lost it. I lost <laughs> it for her. Like, oh, man. <laughs> but that piece of her advice. Like, that's the other thing is just because. You can take something someone said mm-hmm. that is useful to you and not like other aspects of what they're saying. Yeah. Right? Like, I listen to Ben Shapiro a lot. Yes. But I ignore his abortion stuff. Yeah. Because yeah. I think most moderates are like, there needs to be a middle ground. Like, come on. Yeah. I can listen to him knowing I don't agree with him at all on his hard hardline stance. But the rest of his, like 80% of what he says, I'm like, oh, I agree with that. But that, that in itself is a skill, though, right? Yeah. I think it comes back to a lot of, um, you know, training and application, like being able to listen to someone's opinion that you know is, you know, getting under your skin yeah. or feels like it's cleaving a piece of your soul, yeah. you know, without necessarily uh, emotionally reacting, right? Yeah. Because, like, soon as, as soon as the emotional reaction gets a hold of you, like, the, the discussion's over. Yeah. It, it's just, uh, you know, like, uh, like you said in like sparring, like it's not a slug fest. Yeah. Right. Like you guys, you guys are sparring, not just pounding each yeah. other. Tie style. Tie style. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> get in, get out, you know, yeah. uh, focus, you know, yeah. recenter. Right. Um, you know, I, I had that, like, uh, with, I was talking to someone the other day about some topic and it is hard for me. Cause you know me, I'm generally reasonably well researched on the stuff I'm talking about more than the average, but the, they're like, oh, I can't listen to Joe Rogan anymore. I'm like, well, why? Like, because of this one episode. I'm like, I'll tell you what. Like, I had that moment with him a long time ago. He had Abby Martin on, who's a RT thing, and she was just shitting on Israel, like okay. just shitting on Israel, right? In the tight way that a lot of the media do. I'm like, a lot of what you're saying is not accurate. Like, it's just not. And Joe Rogan, I would like to have him have a very pro-Israel person on just to make the because I he has yet to have right. A lot of people don't want to touch. They just don't want to touch it. Um, the closest he's had is his comedian friend, Ari Shafir, but that's about it. But I, I just stopped listening to him for a while. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I started again because for me, podcasts were finally the access to people, the smartest people in the world. Now, he has some of the smartest people. And because of his podcast, I've, I, like, I got over myself, started listening again, and I've got access to people like Tim Ferriss, Eric Weinstein, some of these really <coughs> useful people. And, I, and it's like, you got to get over that emotional thing sometimes. It's like, okay, yeah. And I've listened to the odd podcast once in a while where he has someone on. I'm like, this person's a, I no. And yeah. I, I, I just stop. <laughs> but you made the choice, though. Like, yeah. You're just like, okay, I, I gave you a shot. 
Yeah. I really don't need to like, listen to you anymore. I just can't yeah. anymore. Yeah. And but then you like that's why I think what he did was uh he started separating it a little bit. If it's an MMA one, he'll be like MMA dot 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 and then this right. because that way people can sort of filter through what they want to to a degree. But it's if you're just like, No, I don't want to this person's everything it's like Jordan Peterson, it's like if you talk to a lot of people it's like actually listen to mm -hmm. what he said. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. There's very little actual offensive things, and yep. if you think that's offensive, there's something wrong with you. Yeah, like I really, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how to, you know, uh, some of the like I could see how he, you could be a little annoyed by some of the things he says, but mm -hmm. most of what he's saying is you need to grow up and be a better person, fix yourself first, and that's a hard realization. Yeah, yep. you know yep. that's what I was talking about. Parenting is like a lot of people don't want to fix themselves no they don't and that's why like i don't want to have kids because the world is horrible it's like or you have an ego and you don't want to fix yourself and you know you are going to fuck them up and you know it yeah you yeah. know yeah no it's um it's very true and um i never really um approached any of my friends like over the years on some have had kids and some have not yeah. and i've i consciously Never really asked them why, yeah. you know, on either end, you know, that, that's might their, their be a business. good idea, might not be. Who knows? Yeah, you know, um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely a few where I'm like, right choice. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you can be the best uncle in the world, or, yeah. you know, or, you know, be the greatest aunt in the world. And um, that will that will suit you. Yeah. Right. Um, and, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, as the, as the kids go on, you know, they they feel comfortable making the, those own decisions kind of like we were talking about earlier you know with the negotiation right like you can always tell that someone is um behind something when they're willing to sort of either put their name yeah. or their money behind it, it. it yeah. you know yeah i'll do it right like they've, they've got that confidence to either you know to sort of stick their neck out and be wrong yeah right um or sort of you know willing to you know pivot yeah you know, as uh, you know we've talked about earlier and um I really, really hope that, you know, some of this philosophical stuff that keeps popping up, it's a good dose of that, right? You know, yeah. like people Give just, an example. Uh, well, for me, um, I don't know if Chloe's going to kill me for this, but right now I'm struggling a little bit with the wokeism because I feel, you know, as a as a white male, yeah. you know, like all You're of this, privileged. shut the fuck uh, up. <laughs> well, pre well, pretty much uh, that I'm not allowed to have an opinion. Anymore. I can always at least pull the Jew card <laughs> Then they'll just be anti-Semitic, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I just, you know, I'm still trying to figure out, um, a way where, you know, how do we address all these issues where it's not a matter of stacking, uh, complaint to achieve standing. Meaning, right? uh, meaning, okay. Um, so, I am a let's let's just say okay you know someone says like well I'm the I grew up in East Toronto um, you know single parent and you know so I I deserve you know uh, uh, a place further up the line mm -hmm. and someone goes okay well I grew up in East Toronto with a single parent and my single parent was gay yeah okay so you know you're further up the line yeah. right it's just sort of uh, eventually then it just seems like you know you know people's um, experiences are, are going to become some kind of weird currency yeah and there's a term for that I've just I'm blanking uh, yeah it, you know and yeah. I just I, I just don't want us to um, move in that direction because it kind of like if, if you want equity yeah. Right. Um, Quality versus equity, that it, kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. It, it's going to require sacrifice on everyone's, yeah. you know, part. And I don't. Um, the last thing I would want to see is something where someone says, "Well, I've been disadvantaged, and now it's my turn." Yeah. Right. Because then, if it's your turn, that means someone else has to. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. Right. And that means you got to put them aside. Right. For. Um, you know, for the sake of your turn, who says yeah. it's your turn? Um, well, you know, I have a, I have a story about a friend of mine. He's bi, uh, and he's not. He's a large guy too, so he's you know he was bi growing up. He's older than me, uh, and he once we were, uh, I need to hang out with him again. He's a character, but the 
he was telling me a story and he, he's like, I can't stand the younger generation of bi and gay people. Mm. And I'm like, why? And, and, and like, again, he's bi. He goes both ways. Mm-hmm. He tried to get me to go to a variety of things that are past my comfort level. I was like, no, nah, like, I like you, but no, I'm good. <laughs> um, uh, and he's just like, motherfucker, I almost died. Mm-hmm. In a bar, I think it was in Alberta, and mm-hmm. they found out he was bi, mm-hmm. and they almost killed him. Right. He's like, if that hasn't happened to you, fuck you. Stop complaining. Yeah. yeah. He's like, you guys have it so good now. And it's a matter of perspective, is mm-hmm. that we as humans have very short memories, and that's part of the reason that wokeism doesn't want you to learn history. Now, we can learn new facts about history, and we can alter it slightly as in the textbooks to reflect those new facts, right. but to erase or make up right. is a problem. Right. 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 And to not have that context of here's someone saying like to be openly gay in the sixties and seventies was a problem. Yes. In, yeah. in, in, in Western countries, Absolutely. by the way, it's still a problem in a lot of countries. Yeah. You guys can run around. It was like, it's sort of like example in, in, in Israel. So Israel, hate it all you want. It's the only country in the world that allows you to be openly gay without any repercussions. In fact, right. you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a balance. And so they have the gay pride parade in Israel. But mm-hmm. where is it? I don't know. Tel Aviv. Okay. Where do they want it? Jerusalem. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. You're yelling at the religious people for not being respectful of you. But guess what you're not doing now? You're not respecting them. You're not respecting <clears throat> them. They stay in Jerusalem. Leave them alone. Mm-hmm. You have Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv is a wonderful... They're both wonderful cities, by the way. Mm-hmm. But it's like now you're being obnoxious. Mm-hmm. It's like you have your gay pride parade. No, but we want it there because we want them to understand. It's like, listen, I agree with you. I think the super religious people are nuts. And most people in Israel think they're nuts and don't like to deal with them. But now you're being disrespectful. Right. Right. And now you're just picking a fight and it's no longer about the equality and the equality thing. I think to me, it's equal under the eyes of the law. Mm -hmm. Most Western countries have that. Why is it still an issue? Yes. It's the judges. It's the politicians that aren't doing what they say they're doing. Well, the cultural enforcers, the cultural, that's a good way to put it, are not doing what they're, why aren't you holding them accountable? Why do we keep allowing them? Our current prime minister should be in jail. By the way, I just putting it out there. <laughs> he's done more things wrong that should put him in jail than Trump did. You can say whatever you want about Trump, but the evidence was not there. Right. If we investigated Trudeau to the level of Trump, he'd be in jail. Why aren't we demanding that? Uh, it's it's so uh, it just seems to be the sad Canadian way. Sad. It's, it's the Western way. Yeah. England too. The they have caught the reason why England England has now said. They went from, they're still kind of draconian, but England has now said, oh, whatever, June or whatever, we're opening no matter what, mm-hmm. period. Because they caught a bunch of the high-level people, and I think including the prime minister, involved in a scandal where a bunch of their friends were getting money out of court, like hundreds of millions of pounds. Yeah. And so... Classic political scandal. While I'm all for Brexit, because I believe in decentralization, mm-hmm. period, it's, it's just so many reasons for that. Um Fuck you, Boris Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just like, we as the, the and, and I find this, you know, John, why do you talk about politics so much? It's like, mm-hmm. the things you're complaining about would be solved if the right people got in. Well, people don't want to do that. You know why they don't want to do it? Because the smart people don't want to play the fucking stupid politic games, mm-hmm. the, 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 the bureaucracy bullshit that we all know is bullshit. And yet none of us as citizens are saying no to it. Right. Well, it kind of comes back, I think, to like the classic thing, like doing the right thing yeah. is never easy. Yeah. Um, you know, with the in the future, whatever, whatever this sort of new realm of philosophy, you know, washes over my kids. I just, you know, as a parent, I just want them to be able to step out the front door and be confident in who they are and being yeah. able to, you know, to speak on who they want to be, who they are, who they want to be and, you know, accepting. Right. Um, and I can only hope that with the time I've spent to them, they can, uh, you know, feel that to a certain degree. I have this, this approach that I see, um, you know, coming around sometimes 
I just feel that it generate it can generate fear. Right? Yeah. If you, it, it is a new way. If you step it along, if you're not agreeing with it right out of the gate, yeah, social you're pressure. the problem. Social yeah. pressure, and you know, I see it no different than you know if you were advocating for you know Rosa Parks to be able to use the bus. Yeah. Right. Like, well, no, that's just not the way we do things around here. You can't. Yeah. You, know, you can't do that. And um, you know, many times it's just like, well, are you looking at me because? I am seen as a throwback. I'm a middle-aged white guy. Mm. Um, And so if it's clouding your opinion or if you're prejudging me in that opinion, is that not, is that not the same issue that you're arguing against? Right. So there has to be some acceptance that comes along. Right. And uh, well, the whiteness, it's it's like, Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah. Fuckers. Yeah. Um, So, you know, it's, um, and the tricky bit i guess it's just sort of uh helping helping you know new arguments become more sophisticated yeah um but sophistication requires a lot of people to spend time yeah listen (laughs) yes i just realized i'm not talking to the mic um sophistication requires a lot of time energy and effort right and sort of a pace yeah that allows people to develop a clear understanding around what we're what we're all arguing for yeah um, as opposed to it's wrong. Well, it comes back to that, the overwhelming of information. Like I am, well, you know me enough now that I'm like, listen, I thrive off of more. I want to, I want to know more. Yes. I, I'm drawn towards the politics. I know a lot of people hate that, but I'm, I'm listening to, I want to hear new ideas and the why and this and that yeah. and explore. And, 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 and I find when I try to talk to the average person or just people around me, a lot of people are just not interested. No. And the reality is, and it's going to make me sound like an asshole, <laughs> they're not smart enough to hold on to the information. In what, in smart enough in what sense? Like just so like, the analogy I will use is a computer. Okay. Right? So you have storage, you have your hard drive, your storage capacity, and yep. you have your CPU, and let's say GPU, whatever. Okay, well, some people have a huge storage capacity. Yes. Some people have a huge processing capacity and some people have a huge recall, the memory, the RAM. Yeah. A true genius has all of it. Yes. All right. dimensions. And they can do all of it. They're just a super gaming computer, mm-hmm. if you want to look at that analogy. And some people are still running fucking DOS. <laughs> I feel like I'm running DOS sometimes. No, you are not. <laughs> and it's the way I, like, I know people hate the IQ scale, but it's... It's the best measurement we have. It's the best. It's like democracy, the best imperfect thing we have, whatever Winston Churchill's quote was. And, and, and IQ is a, it's a general scale. Because mm-hmm. even when you measure with EQ, which mm-hmm. is the emotional capacity, yep. the fighter pilots are still always number one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're the best of us. Truly, they are. Yeah. Um, it's crazy what they yeah. yeah. And uh, because a lot of scientists have very low EQ, actually. They think they have higher ones. But no, they don't. It's in a bell curve scale, which I think is a universal model. You can apply to a lot of stuff. You're mm-hmm. going to get twenty eighty rule on that bell curve, right? Yep. Top 20% are doing 80% of the work. Top 20%. Well, let's say, and again, the, so the, the IQ measurement actually bumps up every 10 or 20 years because the general collective knowledge gets more people generally get smarter mm-hmm. as, a, as a whole. And, and, and so let's say whatever it is, 160 plus is genius or whatever. Um, for somebody, if 70 is considered like mentally challenged, retarded, whatever you want to say that makes you feel good about yourself, <laughs> the if you're in that top 10%, that bottom 90% is going to seem the same to you, right? Regardless of where they are, who is mentally challenged to an average. Gotcha. So, the relative scale, and imagine being Elon Musk. Yeah, it's got to hurt. Yeah, to talk <laughs> talking to, to the people. average. Yeah. <laughs> Very true. Right. Now, what you do with that knowledge is a different thing because Elon is the is the true diamond in the rough mm-hmm. because he's actually trying to make the world a better place and he's doing it. Yeah. He's not just talking. He's doing it. He's trying to do it. And he's doing it in a way that's actually effective and reasonable. Now, Bill Gates, he me. He's, a, he's so autistic... He, it, has he made the world a better place in many ways? Yes. 
But he's terrifying because he genuinely doesn't understand the everyman. Mm-hmm. He just doesn't. Elon does, for whatever the difference reason is. And, and again, nothing against autistic people. I may be mildly on the spectrum. But you're difficult to work with for other fucking people who are not in that spectrum. Because you're not understanding. So if you're really smart, but you're not, well, you should do this. Mm-hmm. Okay, but they don't understand that. Well, too bad. They should learn. This is how you get lynched, you stupid asshole. You may be smarter than them. That's how you get guillotined. Right. Lynch is a bad word. Guillotine's more appropriate. Uh, see, there's where I... How Parisian. Yeah. If you piss off the bottom, they're going to come for you. We've known this throughout history. Yep. Right? And so this is where, you know, a lot of this, these smart people who are pushing these ideas... Mm-hmm. Either they're doing it because they don't actually care, they want the attention, they want the money, Mm -hmm. or they think it's a good idea, but they don't really understand. They're like, look at me, I'm smart. Yeah. But then when you look at, like, Naval is a good example. He thinks all this, he's very polite about it, Okay. but he thinks it's all nuts. Versus an Eric Weinstein who's a little bit more like, you're all nuts, and I'm telling you you're nuts. Right. This is ridiculous, but he's he's actually a left, he's a a left of center politically. Um. But even when they, those people are like, oh, you're all nuts. Right. right? And, and the reality is, like COVID's a good example is I'm banging my head against the wall. I'm talking to people about the actual science. And if they, they'll almost always rebuttal, you're not an expert. I'm like, I don't need to be an expert. I can read the experts' data. Them, I can read yeah, it myself. I can formulate an opinion from reading people's interpretations. It's not my fault. You're too stupid to understand it. Right. <laughs> That's the truth about a lot of this. Yep. I know a lot of people who are very smart on left and right. And for whatever reason right now, a lot of the smart people on the right are like, this is nonsense. Just let me leave me alone. But it could be towards the, the inclination to be left alone on people on the right mm-hmm. and independence versus yeah. the groupthink mentality that's being pushed by the left. And it's very smart people on the left. It's like, no. Yeah. The science is like, that's not what the, because anyone who's being honest will tell you a very different picture, man. Yeah. And, if you have behind closed, someone said this about Fauci is like what he'll tell you off the record versus what he's saying on the record at his are, press conferences are two different things. He's fucking playing politics. That's always frightening. Yeah. He's playing politics. He's been caught playing politics. I know what he did for the AIDS thing. He was very instrumental in helping with the, the AIDS pandemic. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he's playing politics now. So why is he playing politics now? I don't know. You'd have to ask. Him. And I, the, the best theory I've heard is that they're doing all this stuff, not because the data is there, but because they want a particular behavior out of people. Okay. Social compliance. Social compliance. Someone even, I, I, I don't recall where it was, even said, yeah, we're doing this because we don't want you to freak out and riot. Right. And it's like, you know how you... Don't get people to freak out and riot. You be honest with them. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, if you basically <clears> said, <throat> listen, we need to shut down for a month till we just get our heads around this. Oh, it's only kill. It's for the most part, not only, but for the most part, killing elderly and and people who. A year later, I'm starting to hear them talk about be healthier. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck? You destroyed the economy? Because this is where the whole Great Reset comes from. Is I don't think that was their intention at the start. No, no, I yeah. I, I think I don't people are it's now connected to that. But... Oper- oh, this thing's happening. Now's our chance. Yes, yes, exactly. It's more. To, I really. That's you know because people who are the A type they jump on the opportunities. Right. You know, Hillary Clinton never wasted a good crisis. I'm yeah. sure she wasn't the only person to say that, but that's the reality of it. And it's like. I, there's just too many people, regardless of the political spectrum, that are not as smart as they think they are. No. With not enough ability to think for themselves, being pushed one way or another. Because when you challenge them with facts and data, mm-hmm. they have that cognitive dissonance. And they're like, ugh. And like you said before, in terms of, <clears throat> you know, sometimes they're just not able to process it yeah. on site. Like they're getting yeah. challenged face to face. And as opposed to saying... I need to go by back and think on this yes. for just a second, right? Yeah. You know, they'll just kind of take the argument in a completely different direction. Yeah. And then you realize you're not actually 
being productive or you're not helping with this debate. And I don't actually want to talk to you anymore. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, even that, like, you know, I'm sure you've met someone. You're like, oh, this person just, they don't understand. It yep. doesn't matter how much I explain to them. They don't understand. So there's that. That's what the lower end of the spectrum yep. is. Yep. I've and seen the, that. the best, they're fine if they understand that. If they're fighting it. Yes. It's with their ego. It's not. Because I've met people who are just not cognitively there. Not, not they're not like mentally challenged, but they're just like they don't get things. Yeah, and it's like okay, look, look, I pick up on it. Okay, yeah, we can make this work. No worries. Uh, then there's people who are like that. Yeah, and they're just they refuse to acknowledge that they don't understand. So a question just popped into my head, like as an instructor, yeah, you must see this all the time. Not only like, okay, like uh, you must end up with students that can A, have a hard time, you know, uh, let's say, you know, with the, with the topics that we discuss yes. in class, right? I mean, it's all part of the service, yes. right? Like, you know, can you be, can you handle being mentally uncomfortable and then oh, also yeah. grasping the uh, curriculum? Yes. Right. So um, people self-select. Okay. More. There are, I've had students who are not cognitively there. Right. And I'm surprised they haven't told me to go fuck myself. They keep coming back because <laughs> I'm not the most compassionate person. <laughs> uh, and, you know, that's my own personal thing I'm working on because um, I just. <laughs> <laughs> but in Vancouver, most people self select or that's not what they thought it was going to be and they leave. Right. Is that the smartest thing as a businessman? No. <laughs> No, but you are sticking to a set. I'm of, sticking to my guns. A certain set of principles. Yeah, like I'll the adapt. Whole, like dojo thing, yeah. right? Like don't want to be that yeah. way. I'll adapt within reason. I'll mm-hmm. change my opinion within reason. What you, I find like you're coming back to the thing. It's like, uh, do you know louder with Crowder change my mind thing? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now he's a bit obnoxious, but he's he's actually a comedian, so he does it funnily um, sometimes. But it's like, I you're stubborn. Listen, all I'm saying is I don't accept your premise. Yep. Change my mind. You're a stubborn asshole. So you're telling me you don't have enough yeah. <laughs> ability to make an argument to change my mind. Or you can't change the tactics of your argument. Yeah. Right? And, and, and people will just say you're stubborn. Why won't you change? I'm like, make an argument. Convince me. Because if you actually follow me, I've changed my mind about a lot of stuff over the years. Yep. And it's just like, you don't want to do the work. So you're telling me I'm stubborn and an asshole. Or, you know, I actually had one person say, I'm never going to win an argument with you. You know too much. Mm-hmm. You're an asshole. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, you have an ego, dude. I have an ego, too. I'm not getting, don't get me wrong. But it's like, you, like I'm glad you can admit it because I very rarely hear that. Yeah. But you basically, it's like, you're an asshole at the end. It's like, okay, man. Like, come on. I actually, uh <laughs> I had a, <clears throat> I had an interesting sort of debate with, um, you know, someone at work. It wasn't even a debate, but uh, they they like to sort of, you know, probe at some of the values because, you know, that I hold. And, um, you know, he just, he, he, he threw up some zinger, yeah. right? He threw up some zinger. And uh, I was just kind of silent on the issue. And, uh, you know, he's just like, you see, you know, like, all your education, you know, it means absolutely nothing. And I just kind of paused and I went, no. What you're asking, this forum of verbal uh, combativeness that you're trying to draw me into, I know I'm not good at. Yeah. So I'm just holding my ground here. You can believe whatever you want. Yeah. But um, why don't we try written argument and then see what happens? Yeah. <laughs> you know, right? and all of a sudden his, his whole premise that he was smarter than the, the university kid just, so, you know, kind of fell apart yeah. and I was just like look um, you know in your oil field land yeah, yeah you had to ha- you had to be able to punch verbally but that's yeah. just that's not my expertise yeah. so I'm not even you know what if, oh, yeah if you yeah well exactly I was just like if you need me to acknowledge that um, you one upped me on a on a verbal tongue lashing yeah awesome yeah. you know like uh, quite often I you know tell the guys like you know if you like me great if you don't like me great yeah right and then <laughs> then they don't know what to do yeah. right after that right there when i was younger i had the opportunity to go up to the old oil fields mm-hmm. make a lot of money as a safety person yeah and i was like i thought about it i was like okay people don't even like me here 
yeah. in the Metro <laughs> Vancouver as a yeah. safety person. I'm either going to get stabbed or I'm going to go nuts yes. up on the oil fields. Yep. So I decided to be broke. <laughs> yeah, just just be broke. Yeah. No, like, I've, I've had one guy describe it as like paid prison. Yeah. Right? Just, you know, he's... <laughs> He joked, he's like, yeah, I could have sworn I heard something guy yell, I'm going to shank you in the shower, you know, after yeah. after lunch. Right? Yeah. Like now I'd be like, oh, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. But, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, I think one of the things I say in class is like, you need to know what you're good at. That's the positive, but guess what? You need to know what you suck at. Oh, yeah. And people look at me like, that's negative. I'm like, it's not no, negative. it's efficiency. Yeah. What are you good at? What are you not good at? Uh, you can then decide how you want to play your cards. Like, mm -hmm. if you're really good at this, but you hate it, mm -hmm. is it worth doing yeah. to you? Yeah. Right? If you really suck at something, you have to ask yourself some questions. Is this something I can get good at? Yeah. Is this something that I'll get good at just from putting the time in? Mm -hmm. Or is this something it ain't happening? Yeah. Like, astrophysicists are few and far between for a fucking reason. Yeah. <laughs> It's a very yeah. like I could never do that. I'm not smart enough. Not and even if I was, yeah. I would hate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's just like people have been fed this positive. Like positivity has been spun in this weird way where mm -hmm. it's like being positive about your self image and how you view yourself really important. Yes, super important. Yeah, being positive because it makes you more liked leads to failure and yeah. leads to a bad kind of catastrophic failure. Well, I think it just contributes to that problem of um, just having more people not truly understanding what it means to be self-confident. Yeah. Right. Like it, it doesn't, it doesn't mean you're super yeah. and everything. It means you can accept um, sucking at things and just, you know, owning it. It's like, not my area of expertise. Yeah. I will try and get as proficient as I can at this, but it's not going to, you know, if it really comes down to it, I got to get someone else to do this because it's just not, Yeah, it's not going to work. Yeah. And yeah. from an evolutionary perspective, that's actually what made humans succeed so much. I suck at this. You're good at this. You do that. I'll do this. It's, yeah. Collectively, we'll figure this out. Yeah. Right. right? And, and we've gotten to the, the entitlement mm -hmm. thing. Well, I'm more this and that. It's like, have you tried to get the skills that you need yes. to get better? Yeah. No. Yep. Okay. Like, how are you going to fix that? I'm not going to fix it for you. Or if I give you the money, you're just going to do the same thing. Like John as a weight male in Vancouver <laughs> yeah. has made the same mistakes. I've been given money and I fucked up because I didn't actually have the skills to know what to do with it. Yep. Right. And it's, it applies no matter what race, what, what gender, whatever. And people want to make it about these things. It's like, that's not the important thing. No, and you're focusing on the wrong thing, guys. Yeah, it's a sort of you know that survivability. Um, I think for like the longest, like the first couple of years of doing this, like Sunday mornings, I'd be stressing, right? Just sort of like, oh, I know I got yep. spar, right? And th that's just sort which of which is normal, which is normal, right? Um, but that that whole element of you know this new environment where not only we're we learning something, but you like, you know, you got to apply it. Yeah. Right? Like you're, you know, if, if you want in the color belt class, you're going to have to spar. And by the way, you're going to have to spar five rounds after yeah. you've done this, you know, this long test. The average right? male overestimates their ability to fight by 4,000%. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. It will. Exactly. Right. And, um, you know, sort of, I would like to see uh, more and more people just becoming more comfortable at what they suck at. Yeah. Right. For sure. And own it. Yeah. Right. Like, it, you know, it doesn't have to be a dramatic thing. Right. Um, like even uh, I was back in, in a, you know, 53 foot trailer and I had to get out and look a couple of times. And this guy just came up and he's like, man, you really suck. Yeah. I was like, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now that, uh, you know, I didn't need you to establish that point. I'm, you know, quite familiar with, uh, you know, my own shortcomings. And yeah. It's funny like that. That actually, that comment that I made actually disarmed the guy, right? He just kind of laughed and then he lit up a smoke and then he helped me get the trailer in. Yeah. Right? Um, so, yeah, maybe the, maybe that's what we need in more curriculum. Yeah. How to enjoy sucking at things, right? <laughs> yeah. And, well, I mean, like there was a Navy SEALs, enjoy the suck or embrace the suck. You embrace know? the suck. The, it's an American military phrase. But it's like, you know, as a martial artist, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. 
I'm a better teacher than I am a practitioner by far. Right now, a couple of reasons. Well, you're not trying hard enough. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> I have a good learning curve so that if I actually sat there and watched the videos like in jujitsu, for example, like all yeah. these other people do and put in the 40 hours a week or whatever and save yeah. on it, I would be way better. Yeah. Um, that's just true about anything. Yeah. I have more intellectual in- inclinations. My physical limitations as a human being, I can't train like that all the time. No, as we I, discuss, I will fall. My no, you're thinking negatively, dude. If I was a fucking athlete, you would know it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Exactly. Don't you think I want to be an athlete? I would love to be. An I athlete. would love to be happen. an athlete. It's not gonna happen. So it's what do I want? So if, like so jujitsu because you know I always say, uh, Krav Maga is my love. Jujitsu is my passion. Yeah. Or the other way around. I can't remember. Was that here? Yeah, that was, oh, yeah. That was my like, phone. Where did that guy's come from? Uh, or Krav Maga is my passion. Jiu-Jitsu is my love. That's right. the way, yeah. Okay. Like, I'd rather train Jiu-Jitsu than I do. But Krav Maga and self-defense is what, like... Yeah. Right. Um, it's like, I'm okay. Yeah. Like, there are guys in there. There are white belts in the gym. Yeah. That are just freaks. They're beasts. They're just beasts. And I'm like, if I'm just physically in a bad day, I have been caught and submitted by some of them. Mm-hmm. I've been doing jiu-jitsu for eight or nine years. Yeah. It's like, okay. And you know what? You Occasionally in a gym, you'll get some new guy who just blows through everyone. Mm-hmm. And you're like, what the, the hell? fuck? <laughs> And then hopefully they become the next big champ because, yeah. and then you don't feel as bad. You're like, yeah, oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. Like imagine being in a gym and Gordon Ryan shows up and he just yeah. runs through everyone. Yeah. He's doing it to all the top. It's like, it happens. Yeah. You know, a thousand years ago, he'd be king of his tribe yes. because that's how you determine who's in charge most of the time. <laughs> Physical but, combat. You know, nowadays it's just like, okay, I'm not the best. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just because you're world champion one year doesn't mean you're going to be world champion next year. Yeah. When you're world champion 10 times in a row, like some of these guys are, it's like, oh, shit. Yeah. Like, they're the best. Yeah. Yeah. There can be only one. There can only be one. Says. I used to race um, road bikes uh, when I was living in Alberta. I was part of a cycling club and um, I managed to get... Um, what you call a category two license, which was, uh, you know, for the province was, uh, you're in the upper levels of amateur. And, uh, I was in this one race. It was for the provincial finals and I managed to get in what you call a breakaway. So there's three of us, yeah. right. And we're ahead of the main Peloton. And if we really, Oh, is that why that company's called Peloton? No. Well, yeah, it's a cycling term. Oh, yeah. It's just, um, but anyway, so there's three of us and we're, we're we're just trying to get to the finish line ahead of the main group because like you know one out of three you would have gotten a medal yeah. right and uh but anyway like on the final hill the final climb you know just kind of looked over my shoulder and uh, this one guy who really wanted to be provincial champion yeah. was leading like he basically dragged the entire peloton past us on the hill and you know won the gold yeah and i was choked I, I was I was so choked, right? Because yeah. I had a chance, right? Like I, I'm uh, the only reason why I succeeded in a lot of uh, athletics was sort of work ethic, not talent. Yeah, right. And uh, so Which I choked. A lot of coaches will say they'd rather have that than talent. Yeah, yeah exactly. So anyway, um, uh, this was 2004, and then um, 2008 goes by. You know, the Olympics in Beijing, and uh, my old coach actually called me up and uh he's just like you've been you've been watching like the track cycling yeah. and uh, i was like no and he pointed out that the guy who hauled the entire peloton on past me out was was now on the olympic track cycling team oh nice uh, yeah. right and uh, you know he, he didn't medal or anything like that but which says something uh, he yeah, didn't he, medal. yeah he didn't medal, right and he's just like you know remember that day you were just you were you know feeling like absolute garbage and yeah. it's just like well you can't feel bad for the guy who just had like the insane talent yeah. decided to do something with it yeah. and then crush you. Right. Yeah. It's just like, that's just the for way I am the destroyer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He was the, he was the 1% that sort of, yeah. you know, rose to the top. Right. And, uh, like you said, like this, no matter how hard, you know, you want to try, like some things aren't just going to come naturally yeah. and then someone's going to blow past yeah. you. Like right? I have two examples, you know, the physics, 
physical, you know, they always tell you that the physical, like you can overcome it with mental, which is true, but there is a spectrum, mm -hmm. right? Like I knew two guys, one basketball, loved basketball, one loved hockey. Right. Both of them had the wrong body types. Right. One of them had the skill. The hockey guy had the fucking skill. Right. He was 130 pounds. Not NHL weight material. He anyway. couldn't even get into the lower league, the higher lower leagues because they're like, nope. He could beat them all skill wise. They're just like, we are not taking you. And the guy was devastated in early 20s. I guess his wife now is like, you fucking get off the couch. You're not going to be a hockey player. Mm -hmm. The other guy was loved basketball. Wasn't even that good. It's five seven. Well, it's pretty small for basketball. It's like, dude, you're not getting in the NBA. Mm hmm. Like you're delusional at that point. And you can always be like, okay, you want to be part of basketball? Sure. You want to be the player? Uh-uh. Not going to happen. It's where we got this this positivity thing. It's like, if you believe, you can't. Do you yeah. need, to, is there fundamental, do you need to put in the work? As a fundamental, basically for anything, yes. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have the other things in a lot of topics, physical is more so than other. Like I, I often talk about David Goggins. He always tells a story about he's overweight, which he was, et cetera. It's mm -hmm. like, well, you probably were. The, you had the ability in your genetics to be an athlete. You just didn't know it. Yeah. It's like, I'm a short Jew. <laughs> I'm Ashkenazi Jew. It's not yeah. in our genetics. Yeah. But you know whose genetics it is? The Mizrahi Jews. Right. Right? They grew up much harder lives for a lot longer physically, and they are little tiny people that can just go crazy. Right. I watched these tiny little guys run circles around Marines. Right. Like 130 pounders carrying their body weight, weight. and running circles around Marines. Just tough SOBs. And it's like, you know, I got, I probably could have done better than I did had I knew about nutrition, health, and how to develop my body properly. I didn't grow up very healthy, but it's like, I really wanted to get into Special Forces. Mm -hmm. My body could not even get close to the test requirements right now i probably could have trained if i knew what to do properly mm -hmm. and took it more seriously at the time i didn't know i had some mental health issues going on mm -hmm. but then i hear about what they were doing mm -hmm. in their regular like the you know the regular eight, training. 18 months to two years training i'm like that would kill me yeah it doesn't matter how much i believe based on my performance against the average infantry soldier. Yeah. That would kill me. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, you know, there's a certain requirement that self-realization, like just not possible. I played a lot of rugby in high school. And, um, when I started training with the university varsity team, I think it was in like after one week of practice, like one week of training with them that I knew I was not going to yeah. make the varsity team. Yeah, I right. And even not. if, even if I did, like, say, you know, I made that team, I would not be someone who could handle the uh, roster for for the season. Yeah, right? it's just uh, you could. I could feel the. I could feel it in my joints. Yeah, something's gonna give quickly, and that's when I said, "Okay, I'm, I'm good. Out, yeah. I'm out." <laughs> and even, even that, if you want to take like the Tom Brady example, mm -hmm. who worked his ass off, put the work ethic, right attitude, yeah, got to where he is. Um, what are you willing to give up? Now, in Tom Brady's case, he didn't. It didn't turn. It turned out great for him. Yeah, but that's one out of how many. But look at David Goggins. How many relationships did he destroy? Yeah. How many people hate him? Yeah. Like interpersonally. Yeah. The, in in the teams, like how many people? What did he? Like he talks about it, but he doesn't talk about it. Yeah. No. He, uh, he scratches the surface, but it's like, dude, you were hated. You made yourself a loner. Mm -hmm. You gave up your relationships. Like if you want to achieve greatness, you can. If you have even if you have medium skill and medium talent, and you want to put in the work, you could. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what are you going to give up? Well, it sounds like it cost a lot of other people. Yes, you know, for him. Well, I think to, so. <laughs> to achieve, you know, his sort of greatness, yeah. and I guess maybe that's just part of that certain personality that is just sort of like, well, yeah, yeah I'll probably borrow from you, and you're not going to get anything from me in yeah. return. And if you reach the top, like I was. Uh, Listening to Rogan with Clarissa Shields, the uh, two-time gold medal Olympic boxer. Mm -hmm. And she was just talking about, like, well, but the, the conversation went to, like, hey, man, it's lonely at the top. Mm -hmm. Like, you're a target for everyone. Yeah. Right? And it's, it's, a lot of people can't handle it mentally. Yeah. Even if they get to the top. 
That's yeah. why you see a lot of spectacular. They were the one, and then crash and, and burn. Down they go, right? And it's just it's. But it's hard being human in the end of the day. <laughs> well, not only that, but again, that sort of accepting, right? Because, you know, everybody says, like, follow your dreams, yeah. you know, stay focused. Maybe. Right? Maybe. Um, and I, I find, like, some of the the greater athletes or, you know, personalities that I found interest were the ones that, like, through the journey, they realized it just wasn't, yeah. wasn't going to sort of work out. Yeah. And... Um, I find it more interesting to talk to someone about why they stopped yeah. as opposed to those that made it. Because generally a lot of those that made it, like they'll publish some book and the story is usually relatively the, the same yeah. narrative, you know, uh, I follow my again. dream. Yeah, exactly. Where it's I find, cliche. yeah, it's cliche. I, and a I bad find, cliche. And a bad one at that. I find the interesting stories are like the ones that will say, wow, that really didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, uh, boy, was I wrong. Yeah. <laughs> no, know? actually, I don't have a problem with cliches. Most of the time, cliches are there for a reason. Mm-hmm. Some cliches like that one are destructive to the greater populace because yeah. it's making people think something that's just I can be an way. astronaut. N- no, you can't. <laughs> Wait another 50 years? Yes, you can. Can you make it that long? Probably not. It's like, maybe. Uh, well, there's a bunch of scientists and obsessive billionaires trying to make us live two, 300 years, and they're probably 100, 100 years off, maybe, so... We'll get there. What us live two, three hundred years? Oh yeah, kind of like the like the Simpsons, Monty Burns head. The the argument is is that if you treat aging like a disease that can be cured, when you understand really understand how we work, yeah, we can stop. And uh, based on what I've seen, I believe it. Just when is we might be too unfortunately born too early for that, and if that's even a good thing, it's hard to say. Like, have you seen The Good Place? Yeah. It's one of the best pieces of television ever. And at the end, when they get to the good, the real good place, spoiler yeah. alert, yeah. it's a, everyone's mush brain because it's too perfect for, two, for millions of years or Jeremy Baramis. And yeah. then they realize at a certain point, people have to be allowed to just legitimately die. Yeah. yeah. Right? So it's hard to say whether that will, living forever will be good or bad. I don't know yet. Uh, yeah. I, personally, I, I think I'm, I'm good with the short time span. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is make make use of what you have time, right? Yeah, I'm good with the short time. What were we talking about right before that? It was... I don't know. It's uh, I th- it just feels like it's turned into just a general Sunday afternoon yeah, discussion could, with the with the kids. Yeah, yeah with the kids. There's something also. I really wanted to say, but I don't remember what it was. We went through a series of topics. Ah, I yeah. don't remember. But you know, actually, like these these conversations, like allegedly with my partner like oh i remember okay before we go through that um the whole here's the skills to do what you need to do like just right. believe just do this therapy gotcha. like so i'll talk about the mental health thing it's like people would say i've been called a negative person my whole life really like yeah from like five six seven years old i would have said pragmatic not whatever you negative. want to call it but people perceive it as negative and it's like, I don't understand. Now, if I were to break down my life, it's I'm smarter than other, the, the average. Mm. And I had no guidance, no real guidance. And right. then it just caused compounding problems. Because uh, I had a friend, grade four, who was smarter than me. Okay. And we became best friends. Gotcha. And I basically abandoned all my other friends. For the smart one? Yeah. Okay. And then they moved away. The smart one moved away. And I never recovered. Oh, God. <laughs> Okay, right. so yeah, you you banked on one thing and then it yeah. disappeared, okay. and then it's like, oh, people over, you rejected other people, you didn't do that, and then no one taught me the skills of how to really deal with people. Got it in any meaningful way. So it's just been a, a compounding thing. And then you, whether it's nature versus nature, you build pathways in your brain and you mm-hmm. build behavioral patterns. And it's like people are telling you, like, just be happy. Right, and I can relate. Something you don't tell someone who's depressed is just be happy. Now, something I realized telling an angry person to calm down. Yeah, right. It's like something I realized when I was on SSRIs is like I couldn't. Mm. I had no internal frame of reference Mm -hmm. for what that meant. Right. So, how do you be something that you can't ground yourself to? Right. So, and the the rage, Mm. or it was also there as a teenager. 
on SSRIs, which I discovered after the army, and everyone was like, "You have PTSD." No, it had nothing to do with the army. It had yeah. nothing to do with the yeah. army. Um, and then you start realizing, oh, because now I'm not reactive. So SSRIs for me were a numb. They just made me numb. Yes, I wasn't reactive yeah. to stuff. I was much quieter. I didn't talk as much. Subdued. Subdued. I can listen. People like me better. But I'm like, I don't, this is not me. Like, yeah. I'm not, my personality isn't there anymore. Gotcha. And they're not a long-term solution anyway. No. Right? And so it's like, okay, go off of them. It's like, you can learn over 20, 30 years the behavioral things, but you're still, there's that brain chemistry thing. So a lot of this advice is disingenuous mm-hmm. about if you just do this. Huh. Yeah, it'll solve all your problems. It's like, well, if it's a bell curve model, what if my brain chemistry is on the bottom 20%? I can't just do yeah. Well, I can't just think. Yeah. That's not how that works. Yeah. And that thing I was talking about earlier that I started experimenting with, and it's like, oh, this is a cure. Mm. Right. I tried experimenting because of re- actual research that's yep. being done, not just because I'm, uh, yeah. but, and then I noticed a difference uh, in my facial expressions. Right. And people are reading me differently. And right. it's like, I had no, zero control over that. Right. Oh, my facial expressions are different now. It's like, huh. So now it's like, because someone, people are like, are, if 80% of communication is nonverbal or whatever they say. Yes. Yeah. But I couldn't even control that. And that is actually okay. the reason people are perceiving me as negative. Not not what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But yeah. now this thing I'm experimenting with has... Relaxed that a bit. Relaxed that. Huh. Interesting. So all of this advice that you're giving me, while it may work for average... Yeah. It's not going to work on, like you said, that 20%. It doesn't developer. work on the extremes. So this is where I can sympathize. I've started sympathizing with the wokeism and saying it's a yeah. mental health incident because you have various groups, minority groups of whatever they are, mm-hmm. who don't feel normal. Right. They're on the 20%. Being given advice that doesn't apply to them necessarily. Some advice like financial literacy, universal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't want to learn it? You're stupid. Get over yourself. Yeah. But now we're starting to bring up the question of how do we deal with this? And then I go back to fuck doctors. And fuck the medical system because... Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. How does that connect? We have M- fMRIs. Mm-hmm. You can do a brain scan. You can find out, oh, you have depression. Oh, yes. you have this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you the, have PTSD. This, this, yeah, I'm a, I'm we have the technology. Results. Why isn't the system doing it? And that's why with COVID, I'm like, do no harm. Fuck you. You're doing way more harm. Yeah. But we have the ability to fix this stuff, right? And so everyone gets fixated on the, the positive exceptions to the rules. Gotcha, but not the negative. But not the negative. And we demonize that. But yeah. the reality is, it, there is no one size fits. There's a general. You, hey, these apply to everyone. Yeah. But for other people, we need to sort of finagle it. Well, and I think along those lines, like, you know, <clears throat> the super, super positive messaging, um, you know, that you can, you know, if you work harder, if you do all this, right, you, you know, you'll fall into that other 20 percent and i guess sometimes we it's not marketable to say like well it's not there it is for 20 percent for 20 percent it's just nothing's gonna help yeah yeah right um and uh that yeah it just doesn't sell it doesn't it doesn't work well on doesn't a, sell. Uh, it doesn't sell not it's not a good uh sort of quote yeah. i once told someone like when i'm more successful i want to write a book of like what not to do in a business how to fail and this, Why not? this person who I, I do respect was like, John, nobody's going to read that. That's so negative. I'm like, but it's what people need to hear. No, it, it's just, I think um, we have to get a lot more comfortable yeah. at that. And you know what? Like, um, I totally remember, you know, getting ribbons for, uh, you know, some swim meet. You're like, you're given a fifth place ribbon. Yeah. You're like, what the hell is this? Right? Yeah. Like, um, better than a participation. <laughs> yeah, better than a party. Yeah. <laughs> that was sixth place. Um, <laughs> but, uh, it, you know, the being comfortable with being uncomfortable, um, you know, definitely I think is, uh, you know, something we got to spend more time, you know, with people like learning how to do, whether it's, you know, kids or adults. Yeah. And, and also, 
um, I think just coming to that realization that, like you said, it's just not, no matter how hard you try with this, yeah. you're not going to be that. Yeah. Right? Like, you can enjoy it. You can keep doing it as a hobby, but whether it pays your bills or, yeah. you know, defines who you are, uh, I, I, I don't think so. Right? Yeah. Like, Which makes me think, with your kids, has the discussion of the relevancy of grading come up? I don't know if you're familiar with this topic. Um, like we don't need it. It's not necessary anymore. No, I, yeah. Like I, I still, I still firmly believe in, um, making a mark Yeah, somewhere, you know, I, I don't care what the test is, right? I don't care what the test Microphone is. is. Yeah, <laughs> no, I know my, I lean my head at the wrong moment. Um, I don't care what the, you know, the measure is or the test, whether it's not the right measure or, um, I think the act of like, just take a crack at it. Yeah. See what happens. Yeah. Right. Because where, where do you, if you don't have a place marker, how do you know how to adjust? Yeah. I think that's a good way to put it. You know, and even if the, even if the marker is wrong or the test is wrong or you're wrong, you know, like you still need a reference point. Yeah. And, um, yeah, we live in three dimensional four, well, however many dimensions. Yeah, exactly. Say. Four dimensions. Yeah, pra- 20 pra- dimensions. <laughs> practically we, for a reasonable perceptual, we live in four dimensions. The rest of them, I don't know what. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, like, uh, I do remember like my own personal report cards, like was, um, I think the markers for like for so long were, um, below average, average, good and very good. Yeah. And I remember well, what is, what is very good mean? Yeah. Um, you know, what does average mean? The and percentage then, thing is the more. Effective. Yeah. I, I think, uh, you know, that was it. And then all of a sudden I got to high school and it was letter grades. Yeah. Right. And that, that was a, you know, a big shocker. And, uh, again, the, you know, um, uh, my son, you know, he does, he does both my kids do fairly well at school. Uh, Finn seems to stress a little less about marks. Um, cause he, you know, he does well. Yeah. Um, and there are some, some subjects I know, um, you're going to make your kids listen to this after. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> And they're going to say, uh, dad's anti-woke and something about marks, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, which, no, not the case if anyone's listening. Um, but with the, you know, uh, Chloe was struggling, um, with some math and, you know, at the end of the day, I was just like, look, you're going to run into these subjects, you know, that you're just not going to pick up. Yeah. Right. So you can, and you can feel like you're going to be drinking from a fire hose. So I don't care if you get, if you just pass. Yeah. What I do care is that you're sitting at the kitchen table, you know, uh, trying to work through it. And when you're not able to get through it, asking for help. Yeah. Right. Because that skill I find is more universal in just life, particularly in jobs. Right. Because you think like if you get an assignment at a job and you don't know what's going on and you don't ask for help and then all of a sudden you present it, your boss is going to be like, what the hell is this? Yeah. And you're not going to get the same forgiving you know, nature as, uh, you know, a, um, I guess a kind, yeah. you know, teacher. There are consequences. There are consequences. There's, to yeah. This, right? So a couple things on that. Like I was thinking about this and it's like, again, it's the you, grades are amazing because it gives you the context, yep. right? If you can't even get a passing grade, there's something going on there. Yeah. Whether you're, you're not showing up, you're not even trying or you're not cognitively there something's not working something's wrong Mm -hmm. if you can't get a passing grade like in my something needs to be beyond the normal so beyond that it's more of that the uncomfortableness of failing or the uncomfortableness of i'm not good enough like i for whatever reason speaking for myself i didn't give a shit yeah i got an a cool on the subjects i like guess what i got a's yeah subjects i'm like eh but I'm I naturally inclined to. I got B's, math and stuff like that. Yeah, I still don't even know the multiplication tables, and I regret it. Yeah, <laughs> but it's like because it's actually you. That's a useful skill. You don't realize that a kid multiple. That's actually a useful skill. That one. Yeah. Um, and it's like whatever. I, I I think I only failed one thing, and it was math. And that teacher should have been fired a long time ago because it right. wasn't just me. Right. Right. One of those situations. Yeah. Um, he sucked at his job. Everyone hated him. Blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Should have been gone a long time. Um, so the, that measurement is important because it gives you that, forever, what do I, do I want to work on it? Do I care to work on it? Do I need to work Where on it? Where am I? What I find is the, the criticism is that they're being misused grades. Mm. More so in the States than here. 
misused in what like what sense? I forget. There's a term, but there's an actual like psychological term for this. But it's basically in the the criticism of grades that they if you don't get straight A's, it's going to be a measure of the rest of your life. It's a valid. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, gotcha. Gotcha. They're they're using grades as a determination for the outcome of the rest of your life. Right, and that's a mistake. Yeah, no, it's not. I don't think. Uh, I, okay, I, under, I understand what you mean because yeah. I, I definitely, you know, going through high school, remember feeling that anxiety. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. Um, you know, if you if you didn't get these grades, you weren't going to get an X university. Yeah. If you didn't get an X university, you know, your job prospects, yeah, exactly. you know, dropped through. The Which roof. is how they were designed, by the way. Uh, yeah, exactly. Right, and you know, I'm sure there was some truth to it, but that was before accessibility started. Yeah cracking away at this sort of um yeah this path yeah. Y- you know so to speak and so yeah um using using marks to get people to buy into a system yeah, is, is shitty <laughs> is, yeah just not the not doesn't the way to anymore. go it, it doesn't it doesn't work. well here's how i look at it like grades are a hammer okay they're using it as a wrench gotcha if you use it as a hammer they're great yep it'll hammer those nails all day long yep. great you want to use it as a wrench, which is what they're using it as, not going to work so well. No. So if it's just a measure of where you're at, great. Yeah. If you make it as this is going to determine the rest of your life, for most people, guess what? Because most people don't belong in that Ivy League school anyway. Exactly. To be honest, they don't. Yeah. It shouldn't, it shouldn't, always, it shouldn't always be or even close to being like the final marker of potential. Yeah. Right, um, because there's you know there's all kinds of factors in behind those those grades like yeah. um, a lot of like a lot of employees that I had uh, you know uh, would come to me and be like well you know I kind of graduated you know top of my class and this is um, a little beneath my expectations and yeah I'm like, well um, yeah you know okay great wait they finished at the top of their class and it was beneath their expectations uh, yeah, well no in terms of like the work assignment. Or um, their performance review. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. And uh, I said, well, um, don't know if I can help you with that. Yeah. But I, what I can tell you is that, uh, you know, on the basics, yeah. you were failing. Oh, right. yeah, you, you know, like, hey, you know, like um, when I need to find you, I couldn't, you know, uh, when you're not, when we need this sort of delivered I on time, you, mean, no. you know, I missed something there. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I probably, because I didn't state it. Um, you know, they were, I guess what my point is they were using it as a reference point of how good they were at something yeah. when I had other metrics that showed that they were not performing yeah. well. Right. It's just yeah. like, okay, the, this top of the class stuff, that's fantastic. You oh, know, I amongst see. your other peers, you yeah. know, who are graduating, but, this is not tell. This is not going to be your wash um, to tell me, you know, whether you deserve a promotion oh, I see. Yeah, or yeah. for me to uh, put a place marker on how you're doing at your job because that, you know, that doesn't that doesn't apply yeah. anymore, yeah. right? Like, well, someone once said, "Is uh, what is it? I hired you with your diploma. Don't give a shit about your grades, though." Yes, <laughs> you got the diploma. Cool, that meets Good. the minimum requirements. Don't care about the grades. No yeah. one checks the grades. No one, che- no one has <laughs> ever asked. It. Yeah, that that was another little bit of a shocker. Like, um, you know, going through undergrad, like you got to get these grades if you want to get into grad school. Yeah, right. So, or have a certain class on your um, degree. But yeah, when no one asked me for, you know, <laughs> can I see your transcripts? Yeah. You just feel like, oh man, I fell for that lie. Yeah. <laughs> It was kind of like the pilot thing, right? Uh, I have a theory. No one's ever told me whether I'm right about it or not because it's you know, in Israel. So when I did, they do pre-screening, mm-hmm. mental and physical. And I didn't speak very good Hebrew. Mm-hmm. I still don't. I forgot most of it anyway. So they give you the test in English. Okay. The English version or whatever language you take it in is very short. Got it. They, it. You just sit down, do an interview. You do one of those like uh, progressively difficult, which one is not like the other or yeah. what's the pattern thing. Um, I scored relatively high on those. But then you hear about the Hebrew test. Right. 
complicated right. math and physics and science and blah, blah, blah. First of all, you need to have basically conversational Hebrew before they let you do it. Mm. I find out one of my friends who didn't even do that full test got into one of the most black ops, black ops units you can get. Okay. And I'm like, okay, what is that test really for? Yeah. They're looking for the pilots. Gotcha. Most of it's for most people nonsense. You're right. I, I scored as high as you can get on whatever their like mental score you can get. But if you take the other one, then but you're... the real test is looking for the pilots. Right. Okay. They've sorted. It's a complication upon complication. Can you get through all this and process the and, information? And and if you think about the, the that whole system was they're looking for the geniuses. Yep. Back in the day. Yep. They were looking. Okay, you got into school. You're probably smarter than most people like 100 years ago. Yeah. Now we're looking for progressively to weed down to get the brilliant minds. Right. And that's what the system, and it comes back to what we were saying, is everyone wants to be that. You're not that. Yeah. 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 Right? No one cares about the straight A's. If you were that, you would be the professor. Yes. Like you would be doing it already. You just kind of, yeah, they just sort of gravitate through all that. Yeah, and uh, then they, you know, they become that sort of that top spot or that top dog. Now, so because we've made it the hammer into the wrench, that everyone's like, I must get in it. And the reality is, what what is the advantage of going to Ivy League school? There's only one answer: network. Network. That's it. That's it. You're smart, smarter than you think. <laughs> right? It's the only reason you go to an Ivy League school. Yep. Is the network? You're going to meet the richest, the most connected people in the world at those schools. Yep. That's the only reason to go to them. Yeah. It's going to bust your bank. But there'll be some reward at the end if uh, Maybe, that's what you want. If you know how to play the social games. Even if I got into those, mm-hmm. I'm not playing those silly games. So I'm, it's not useful to me. Yeah, so you would just have in a Harvard yeah, a Harvard degree with a guy who's got a Harvard degree. No. But that gets you in a lot more doors than a guy with, you know, Quantlin over here. Yeah. <laughs> but you'd be surprised. Like, uh, I guess in the U.S. it really matters, you know, quite a, lot a more, bit. Yeah. Not here. Yeah. Right. Like, uh, no one asked me where I graduated from yeah. or what I graduated in. They yeah. said, "Do you have a degree?" And I would just say, "Yes." Okay. Yeah. yeah. Which actually is Canada is a lot more. The social divide is not as big in Canada as say England or the U.S. Okay. But yet Canadians believe it to be so. Okay. In a lot of ways, there are some cases, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I think we're a lot more like nobody cares. Like in Israel. Uh, you could be in the same unit. You could be. You could have a broke ass person coming from a barely feeding themselves home yeah. with the richest guy in Israel's son in the same unit in Israel. And there's now. What's one of the things about the army is it just forces everyone there to sort of. You're all going to be together. You're all going to embrace the sect together. <laughs> yeah. You're going to deal with it, right? And nobody wants to do that in the quote privileged societies anymore. They don't want to just deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. Like coming back to like the gun thing. Hey man, do the course with me. Yeah, you don't have to get your license. I don't care, but at least before you start, you know, proselytizing me about why guns are bad. Yeah, do the course. Look, See what do I'm the course, doing. and then we'll talk. Gotcha. As a, as like a minimum. Yeah, and then people just don't want to do that. So yeah, I mean, your pal course was definitely not. Uh, well, I'm different. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there was a, uh, you know. Lots of interesting discussion on top of, you know, okay, yeah. you know, this is what we have to do, you yeah. know, to get your, your pal, so to speak. But uh, I'm going to cram all this information into you that you don't need to pass because it's not about passing. It's about safety and understanding firearms. <laughs> yes. You know, it's again, I know of, I know of a lot of instructors. This is what you need to do to pass. Yeah. You're teaching wrong. Yeah, because, uh, you know, like anything else, like um, if you don't have the context yeah. behind all this stuff, right? As soon as, you're, as soon as you've passed, yeah. that's it. Yeah, and that's, that's why I say that because I've seen people at the range mm-hmm. like, we got our membership. We just got our pals. We have no experience. And I'm like, stay away from me. Ooh, yeah, you know. No, I, am, I start <laughs> like inching towards it. I'm like, maybe you should do this. Right. It's because most people see it as a as a cash cow and like I'm in getting people into the I'm probably going to screw myself saying this but um I'm going to make money and I'm just uh, no we can't say anything. I'm like no, I am here to educate you on mm-hmm. firearm safety yeah. which includes understanding the culture around firearms. Yeah. And the beliefs and disbeliefs. Yeah. Now if someone comes in never heard of them like this guy's totally biased but I'm like, actually not. I'm just telling you what's going on right now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It sounds very biased. Hey, our prime minister is doing this right now. And if you want to get guns, yeah. you need to be aware. 
that you can vote for whoever you want. Yeah. It's a democracy. But if you vote for that party, you're not going to have your guns very long. Yep. Yeah. I'm just saying, you need to understand what you're getting yourself into. Yes. Right? Yeah. Do I need to teach that? No. But that's relative to them being a new gun owner. Well, it's, it's a new world. Yeah. Right? It's a new world, and it's going to have rules and influences. And, and if you rely on the internet for gun information, <laughs> you're fucked. <laughs> well, like I said like earlier, right? Like a lot of the stuff... Um, you know, these tickets and these books, they're kind of bringing you into this, um, they're preying on your lack of confidence. And then you're buying into this sort of this education system where like, if you want to go to the next level, you got to, you know, buy this course over and over yeah. and over again. Whereas like, you know, with your pal course, it's just like, all right, we're going to, we're going to hammer out the basics here. You're going to develop a broader base of knowledge. Yeah. You're going to be, you have to be a thinking owner. I don't want. I don't want nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, here you go, right? Yeah. And uh, I think I, I haven't received my pal yet. Call him. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a it's a backlog right now. It's just because now I haven't seen the new numbers, but I believe I I saw somewhere, and I hope this is true. I could be wrong. That you know, forever the number was hovering around two point two million Canadians with gun licenses i heard it's actually at like three now I all of a sudden surprised. in the last year well chaos people like what? chaos and no the firearms, firearms in yes no i remember um <laughs> they are not weapons unless they're in the hand of the military in which case blah 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 yeah. um and people are just like obviously more canadians want this than you think mm -hmm. it's slowly gonna encroach on like 10 percent of the population yeah right that is like okay that's a make or break percentage of people for any given election yep in, in all reality well you'd be surprised at how many people actually um the more i talk to people around you know work you're surprised at who has their yeah a lot know, of people do in vancouver a lot of people do and they don't talk about it but they do yeah which kind of goes you know contrary to like the sort of belief that you know we 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 don't have a lot of people who own and operate firearms, yeah. right? Like, but uh, we do. But we do. <laughs> it's just Toronto that thinks this bullshit and forces it yeah. down the rest of the fucking country. Yes, yes. Right? And and you know, actually, I was shocked. I saw some percentage in America. It's like percentage of gun owners, and like the highest state was sixty something percent. I was like, huh. In which state was that? Uh, one of the mid. States, I think not Nebraska. Nebraska surprisingly had a, it was funny because Nebraska was like twenty percent, and then all the surrounding states were like fifty, sixty percent. Right. And someone made the joke that like, yeah, they don't need guns; they're protected with a wall of people. With, well, yeah, a wall of right? people with. Uh, of course, yeah. California and New York are extremely low, but it's still like it's one of those like not I probably like Montana or one of those like. Wouldn't be surprised about Montana. Yeah, Montana is a you want a gun, you can have a gun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yellowstone's a good show, by the way. I'm sure it's not at all realistic. It's so over the top. I've yet to watch it. It's I, pretty I, good. I'm going to start. I'm, I'm Very start. aggressively violent. Like, they're cowboy gangsters, basically. <laughs> well, the, yeah, I guess spoil it. Just the, the opening scene, uh, you know. Oh, yeah. Um, with the horse leg. I was like, wow. Okay, yeah. they're, they're really, they're going for it, yeah. you know, right away. I'm just like, no one would get away with this much killing. Nobody. <laughs> like, it's impossible <laughs> to bring this much attention to yourself. Like, but it's still, it's a good show. But yeah, it's like the, the guns is actually a good thing of like, what do you know? What do you really know? Mm -hmm. You know, that right now the tragedy was the Atlanta shooting with the Asian massage parlor. Right. Well, you hear what the guy actually said, why he did nope. it? Any guesses? No. So he's a white guy. Any guesses? Wasn't around centered around hate crime though. I could you could argue it, but not the way it's being spun. So he okay. said he did it because he's combating his sex addiction and that he couldn't he didn't like the idea of having these massage parlors there because okay. he couldn't resist his own urges. Now the hate crime, I would I would say it's more likely is a crime against women. Yes, it's like okay, that's that would be I would understand that. What's it being spun as? Oh, white guy with a weapon. White guy with weapon kills Asian racist hate crime. Now, got it. I think people saying there isn't a rise against hate crimes against Asian are being they're not being honest. 
Right. And they're for sure has. It's happened in Vancouver. And when it's happening in Vancouver, it's like, okay, this is a problem. Yeah. To do with coronavirus. But to make that specific event and misrepresent it, like the guy told you what it is. Right. And then they're going to twist it anyway to their narrative. And if I tell, it's like the, what's the guy? I, the, the, the trials start, well, the jury selection is going on right now. Um, the thing that started the whole Black Lives Matter thing. Oh, the George Floyd. George Floyd. Well, what actually killed him? Oh, the um, the uh, uh, the excited hypoxia or something. Excited delirium. Or something. Delirium, right? Yeah. Now again, we can say, yeah, he, given the fact he wasn't resisting that much, he didn't mm-hmm. necessarily need to have his knee. That most people are like, okay, fine. Mm-hmm. That's not what killed him. Because mm-hmm. I've done that to people. Yeah. They're fine. Yeah. But if I ask the average person. Yeah, let's say no. It was the it's the knee on the neck. Nope. Yep. Listen, man, if he wasn't high out of his mind on drugs, he probably wouldn't have died. Right. If Eric Garner had been healthy, he probably wouldn't have died. Now, the Eric Garner one's a little bit more like, dude, he, the reason you were arresting him in the first place is like... Well, wasn't he was like in a completely weird altered state? He like, didn't, no, Eric Garner. I think Eric Garner. The one in New York, maybe I'm mixing them up now. It was... Uh, he... Something to do with like passing a twenty dollar fake check or something. Oh, okay. Now, I, of course, like stop resisting arrest. Yeah, you don't have to agree with why you're being arrested. As long as they're not beating you Rodney King style, right? That is a problem. But if they're yeah. not beating you Rodney King style, don't resist arrest. Right. Just don't get a lawyer. Yeah. Whatever. Because it's not going to go well for you. But like the, the people don't look into past what their initial thoughts were. And yeah. they, the media and people do this knowing the psychological effect is people that, I forgot what it's called, latch on to the first idea that's put in their mind and they don't want to change yeah. their mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like now we're not having these on, honest conversations. Yeah. You know, yeah. right. So I think, you know, circling way back to the yeah. parenting <laughs> thing, <laughs> teaching kids how to think critically mm-hmm. and to wade through the information as you said it's overwhelming yep which it is it always is for everyone is the most important thing you can do for people yeah right well the um you know particularly with the kids um with the information again being so overwhelming so constant yeah the only thing that they can do is to uh make a decision yeah right you know because like if you keep if you keep searching for more and more and more information to make, to form an opinion or to make a decision, you will never get to that point. Yeah. Right. Because there's no such thing as You'll perfect. Never information. move forward. <laughs> you will never move forward. So, you know, it kind of comes along the lines of, you know, helping develop their, their self-confidence because I would rather that they make a decision be wrong, you know, listen to uh, the counter arguments and then move forward. But did you die? Yeah. No. no. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Exa- <laughs> did you die? You know, at the you know, like you know, or do you? Um, you could even apply that to you know basic financial planning. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, do you have a roof over your head? Like you know, you still got a pair of pants to wear. Yeah. You know, okay. You know, then yes, you could probably go have dinner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, take on that extra bill. But. Uh, uh, the information will just keep coming and keep coming and keep coming, and um, we'll make a stance, yeah. right? Like make a decision, may it make an form an opinion. It's kind of like Krav Maga. Very you much. don't have time to do think. something. You need to do, do something. something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do something. Yeah, right. uh, I think that's a, probably a good place to put a pin in it. Absolutely. Um, any parting last anything other than. Just make a decision and do it. Just do something, right? <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Well, thanks for coming on. And, no, no problem. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow, probably. Sunday. <laughs>